<laughs> I know. I was listening back to the start of the programme yesterday when you were talking to me. You know, you, you played gold and we were talking about I, the weekend. Uh, did you relive it all, God. did you? I was a miserable git. I must Are have been very, more bad for No, but I think you, you were just... You were just <laughs> no, I thought you were kind of very... Right? Thought, no, no, I'm you were just being very modest <laughs> and, you know, not, you know... <laughs> Big headed. I think listener home must have thought, my God, this is a boring old git, isn't it? A boring old fart. I don't use that word. A boring old bang bang. You say the bang bangs, I say, yeah. we say toots in our house. Right. Toots? Well, toots and all the things in our house. What's toot? A uh, poo poo? No. Pee pee? No. no. What is it? A rift? Pee pee. Pee pee? Right. A toots, a pee pee in your house. Donna Marie, you okay over there? Ah, oh, she's poo. Donna Marie, you? listen to this chat and the Morrissey has all started with you yesterday. Like, you would have been raised using the word bang bang, wouldn't you, Donna Marie? Um, no. No? No. no. Okay. What would you call a bang bang or a toot or a fart? It's more of a who did that? All oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> who did that? Yeah, no one's going to accept uh, No one's accepting responsibility, I yeah. think. You know? Why do men find farts funny? Like I don't. No, do you not? Up, but in our house, they still find them funny. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Mummy farted. <laughs> Again. Poor mommy. I know, and girls don't fart. No, but no, none of. I don't know. What are you doing to Carney for when you just, <laughs> just stop? <laughs> There's two girls looking at me, going, "Why is he talking about?" Can this? I just leave I, the studio now? Yeah, yeah, I want. I want Can to I just look. disassociate myself with the last 30, 40, maybe All even right. a minute of conversation? <laughs> are you going to listen back to this tomorrow? No, this, that's it. Finished. Good luck. All right. See you later. Uh, Lee, wait for a toot. Okay, it is nine o'clock. Let's get a news update now. Over to Donna Marie. Thanks, Greg. Good morning. The public expenditure says today's budget is about helping people meet the cost of living while protecting important public measures. Budget 2024 will be unveiled at lunchtime today. It will contain changes to USC, a 12 euro weekly increase for pensioners and those on welfare, supports for renters and those trying to cope with increasing mortgage interest rates along with supports for businesses. Minister Pascal O'Donoghue says while there will be something for everyone, they have to be careful but won't be it won't be a concern. Conservative budget. The amount of growth in day-to-day -day public spending uh, is at a lower pace uh, than the budget that was brought forward for last year. And also the one-off measures that we have brought forward uh, have been changed to reflect the fact that uh, while inflation is still present in all of our lives, it is growing at a slower pace than it did a year ago. So the budget is of a different scale, uh, but it is still by historical standards a big budget. It's hoped that threats of a blue flu over Garda rostering complaints have now been put to bed with an interim roster for the force set to be implemented shortly. The four main Garda representatives organisation met with management yesterday and agreed on a deal that will avoid seeing members return to their pre-COVID roster on the 6th of November. The development was welcomed by the Justice Minister Helen McEntee, who says the interim roster will ensure Garda can continue to deliver service to the public. President of the GRA, Brandon O'Connor, says both sides will return turn to the negotiating table shortly to work on a more permanent solution. Well, there's a commitment on all sides to, to find a speedy resolution, as I say, we, we, what we have on the table for discussion as um, as a starting point is very close to what we believe is the future and will satisfy the needs of our members. Police are appealing for information and witnesses following recent thefts from chemists in Castle Derg and Straban over the weekend. It's believed two men aged in their mid-20s to 30s were involved in three separate incidents. Tara Duggan reports. It was reported on Saturday afternoon, shortly after 25 to 2, that two men entered a chemist in the John Street area of Castle Derg and stole eight candles and made off on foot. The first man is described as wearing a light blue sports top and grey bottoms. He was wearing silver jewellery and had tattoos on his left forearm. He was also carrying a black bag. The second man was also wearing all black clothing. As part of police inquiries, they're linking the theft to a second occurrence on Saturday afternoon at approximately half past three. It was reported the first man entered a chemist in the Main Street area of Straban and took five perfume sets from the premises. He's believed to have also entered another chemist in the Upper Main Street area of the town, but was challenged by staff and left without taking anything. Those with information, including mobile phone or CCTV footage, are being asked to contact police. Look into weather. Outbreaks of rain and drizzle this morning. More persistent rain will develop in the northwest towards the evening, tracking southeastwards. Warm and humid with highest temperatures of 17 or 18 degrees. That's all for now. The next news update is at 10 o'clock. Until then, good morning.
from Marvel Studios. What I'm about to tell you is going to be hard to believe again. Loki Season 2. War is on its way. Join the God of Mischief on his mission. You better run! To save the multiverse's past, present, and future. Time slipping. You know that? Yeah. You've seen that? Yeah. Can you fix that? No. Marvel Studios' Loki. New season now streaming exclusively on Disney+. 18-plus subscription required. T's and C's apply. The county's number one talk show, The Nine Till Noon Show, on Highland Radio. And now, it's time for the talk of the Northwest, The Nine Till Noon Show, with Greg Hughes on Highland Radio. Hello, good morning, four minutes past nine. You're very welcome along to Tuesday's Nine Till Noon Show here on Highland Radio. Now, we have another packed show for you, lots coming up on the programme, and we want you involved in the conversation. And I'm going to remind you, as I do every morning, how you get involved, or indeed, Start your own conversation uh, with us here. 086-60-25,000, your WhatsApps and text that number. Now, if you're dialing from outside the Republic, it's 0035-386-60-25,000. You can send your voice messages to WhatsApp as well, by the way, too. And if you want to give us a call, Caroline, taking your calls this morning, 74 And if email's your thing, comments at highlandradio.com. Uh, and good morning to Dolores and Audrey, already joining us to watch the show. Just to remind you, if you want to watch it on your smart TV, most uh, smart TVs now have access to the YouTube app. You can download it or it's there already. Just search Highland Radio Ireland and give us a like and watch away there on your big screen. Uh, and also on your Fire Stick, you'll find the YouTube app there as well. And we're across all your devices on both YouTube and Facebook. Um, the papers today are full of um, devastating pictures uh, of uh, primarily what what stands out at me is, is children covered in dust, caught up in um, uh, caught up in the awful scenes that we're seeing in the Middle East uh, at the moment, um, and uh, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu says Israel is fighting for its existence and called on opposition parties to join an emergency national unity government. This is the Irish Times. His comments uh, came as Israeli aircraft pounded Gaza in advance of a massive ground offensive, which is expected in the coming uh, days. Almost 700 residents in Gaza have already been killed, with almost 4,000 wounded. Israel claims hundreds of fatalities were militants. Israel also killed uh, four Hezbollah fighters in South Lebanon yesterday after Palestinian gunmen infiltrated across the Lebanese border, raising fears that the powerful Iranian-backed Shia group will launch a second front, and that would be uh, as devastating as things already are. If a second uh, front opens, it's going to make a very, very unstable area. Uh, of course, I mean, you could even uh, roll it out to the, uh, the global level around, backed by Russia, Israel backed by America. There's already a war, uh, proxy war raging between the two in Eastern, uh, in Eastern Europe. Uh, and now, obviously, it could happen here as well. We are at the third day of the war for our very existence, one which we will win, Mr Netanyahu said in the live televised address to the nation last night. Hamas is the same as ISIS and will combat it in the same way it was combated by other countries in the world. We've always known that Hamas was, and now the world knows, is too. Let me say this clearly, we're only, we've only begun to act against Hamas. His comments come as the number of Israelis killed in Saturday's attack when hundreds of Hamas militants infiltrated across the border rose uh, to 900, and that figure is expected uh, to rise. Now, of course, too, what he also announced yesterday... Uh, Netanyahu is that he is and it's really against international human rights laws you would imagine he is cutting water uh, gas, electricity to uh, the city of uh, Gaza which is obviously going to have a devastating impact on its population uh, it runs as far as I'm aware by um, controlled by uh, Hamas and on it goes in another part of the world where it's just a devastating uh, loss of uh, life and children caught up in it as well. Uh, the Irish in that's the Irish Times. The Irish Independent focuses on uh, what we're likely to see in the budget. There's going to be no surprises this afternoon because most of it's out. Uh, in terms of housing, mortgage interest and relief uh, worth 1,250. I believe that's particularly if you are on a variable rate or you are on a tracker. Uh, 750 renters credit, tax cuts for landlords, 
Uh, almost €400 euro in energy credits are expected. In terms of social welfare, €12 euro per week increase on pension and social welfare rates. Christmas bonus of social welfare payments. Once off, uh, double payment of all social welfare in January. And there'll be plenty of scrutiny of all of this, of course. Uh, but it's probably going to work out that workers will get a, effectively a 15, uh, 15 euro increase per week uh, and those on social welfare will get uh, 12 euro of an increase uh, per week and I, I presume I suspect there might be a bit of a, a backlash uh, from workers in relation to that uh, top rate of tax to rise by two grand cut to USC from 4.5 to four percent minimum wage hike by 140 to 1270 which is uh, a cost that will be um, taken by employers not necessarily the government in terms of uh, students student grants to increase by more than 300 euro uh, free school books for 770 uh, thousand uh, children cigarettes are going to go up 50 uh, percent as well and then there are some other measures um there'll be 50 cent added to the price of 20 cigarettes while mr mcgraw will outline a plan to tax e-cigarettes and vapes though that requires uh, new legislation fuel and alcohol will not be hit with a further excise increase and a scheduled seven cent increase in the price of petrol and six cent on a litre of diesel, which had been uh, due to apply from the end of this month, will be delayed. Uh, and there's also a problem to uh, coming down the track with oil prices because that situation that has uh, now emerged um, between Hamas and um, Israel is already driving up the price of a barrel of oil, which means eventually, and I don't know how long it might take, unfortunately, that's going to filter through uh, to the petrol pumps and to your home heating oil and what have you. Uh, right, on to the Irish Daily Mail this morning. And Ireland is paying Ukrainian refugees €220 Euro a week, more than five times as much as other refugees. Concerns are growing across uh, government over Ireland's outlier status when it comes to the scale of welfare payments for Ukrainian refugees when compared to other European states. Leo Varadkar hinted at potential for changes in areas such as welfare in response to a recent parliamentary question from independent TD Mark McSherry. The latter asked if the Taoiseach was aware that while we provide €38.80 Euro per week for those seeking international protection, we are a complete outlier in the EU and neighbouring countries with the provision of €220 Euro per week for those fleeing Ukraine. Deputy McSharry said, according to the European Centre for Parliamentary Research and Documentation, this is more than twice that provided by the next highest country, Finland, at €107, Euro, and almost 28 times more than the €790 per week provided provided in Belgium. He continued, such an anomaly amounts to the effective marketing of Ireland as the preferred location for those fleeing Ukraine. Will the government adjust our policy to provide an element of balance with other countries given the inordinate pressure on accommodation in this country, he asked. Well, the Taoiseach said, the uh, benefit of the temporary protection directive gives people particular rights under EU law. We're constantly looking at what our offering is for refugees fleeing the war in Ukraine versus what is offered in other EU EU countries and he indicated that uh, we have to be sensible about these things so whether or not that will be changed in the near future uh, remains to be seen but it's clear um, there's much more money available in Ireland than there is in other countries. Uh, on to vapes and a couple of papers have done a expose on vapes uh, today. Children can buy vapes with shocking ease the Irish Daily Star uh, says it has revealed. A 14-year-old boy openly purchased four disposable devices in an hour because there's no law on selling them to under-18s. Ireland is one of the last countries in the world that has not yet banned their sale to kids. He bought brightly coloured, sweet-flavoured vape pens as easily as lollipops in a corner shop, a dedicated vape outlet and two phone stores in Dublin city centre. The paper's special investigation also found seven children were hospitalised last year due to vaping, one with antifreeze poisoning. The paper says it also learned primary schools see young kids with vapes while principals report most teens use the devices. And our probe, as they described it, also confirmed plans to introduce a raft of laws before the end of the year to regulate sale and protect uh, children, which will also cover uh, the excise on those devices as well, I'm sure. 
The Irish Daily Mirror, about 17,000 women in the north will have smear tests rechecked by the Southern Health Trust as part of a major review dating back to 2008. A report from the Royal College of Pathologists found that while the majority of negative results issued by the Trust's laboratory screen service were correct, a significant number of women are likely to have had negative screening results. In what the Southern Trust called a precautionary measure, records of about 17,000 women screened between January 1st, 2008 and October 2021 <coughs> will be review- reviewed. Dr Stephen Austin of uh, Southern Trust said the report identified performance issues in the lab. And also an interesting um, study which was reported yesterday as to what the British public think of Brexit. Are they happy with it? Do they think it's going well? Well, less than one in ten or fewer, I think, when you're talking about uh, individuals, you have to say fewer, not lesser. Fewer than one in ten British voters believe Brexit has gone well, according to a new study. However, the research found the idea of a new referendum is divisive and that a majority of Leave voters would still vote the same way again. The poll was carried out for the UK in a changing Europe think tank. Only 9% of respondents feel Brexit went well and less than a third believe it will ever turn out well. However, the public first opinion poll and interviews with focus groups found that this dissatisfaction would not automatically translate into a vote to rejoin the EU. It found that 48% would vote to rejoin, while 32% would vote against. So it might pass, probably, when it came down to it. It wouldn't. Uh, On the subject of whether or not you would vote to go back into Europe, if you're in Britain, it's 50-50, really, I would say. But 9% of people believe Brexit went well. And finally, Cork TD Sean Sherlock is the latest politician to announce he will not run in the next election, according to The Sun. The Labour veteran yesterday confirmed he will not be on the ballot after his mallow stronghold was removed from the Cork East constituency in the latest boundary uh, redraw. It follows the shock resignation of former party leader, Labour Party leader, that is, Brendan Howland. Lots of them are saying, right, enough is enough. I'm going to take my money and pensions and run. Uh and go on and do something else, I'm sure. OK, that's the papers for you this morning. The newspapers are courtesy of Kelly Centra Mountaintop Letterkenny, the 2022 Sea Store National Off-Licence of the Year. The 9 Till Noon Show is brought to you by Letterkenny Credit Union, offering low-rate car loans with fast approval. Apply online at letterkennycu.ie or in office today. Derek Ryan returns to the Clanry Hotel Letterkenny for his weekend of dancing this Friday 13th and Saturday 14th of October with special guests Sinead Black and Jim Devine on Friday night and Gavin Gribben and Johnny Brady on Saturday night plus late night bar entertainment each night. That's Derek Ryan's weekend of dancing Friday 13th and Saturday 14th of October at the Clanry Hotel Letterkenny. Pay at the door. Ho, ho, hold on to your handlebars, Letter Kenny. LK Bikes Christmas Club is now open. Santa's one stop shop for kids' bikes and e scooters. Secure your gifts with a small deposit and enjoy easy online payments later. Make this Christmas unforgettable with LK Bikes. Visit us today in store or online at lkbikes.com. In the final clearance sale at Watson Menswear, a selection of casual jackets, shirts, polo shirts and suits are half price. Also, men's and women's super dry and a selection of kids' clothing clearing at half price. And there's two pairs of jeans from €70. These offers are for a limited time only or while stocks last. In the big final clearance sale, now on at Watson Menswear, Main Street, Debra Kenny. Open seven days, late Thursdays and Fridays. Driving on properly inflated tyres is not only safer for you and your family, it will reduce your fuel consumption and save you money. And it's much better for the environment. Get your tyres checked by a Circle ELT member today. It's free. There are over 3,000 member outlets nationwide. To find out more, visit circleelt.ie. Circle End of Life Tyres, supporting National Road Safety Week in association with the Road Safety Authority. 
Autumn is here and so are the new arrivals at Green Shoes. Shop in store or online now from top brands like Doc Martens, Kate Appleby, Tommy Bow and Riker. Also New Balance, Wonders, Echo and many more. Shop LK and one for all gift cards accepted in store. Visit Green Shoes and discover the perfect footwear to complement your style. Green Shoes at Market Square, Letterkenny Shopping Centre, Fulcara and online at greenshoes.com. Highland Radio Time Checks with Expressway. Travel Route 32 from Letterkenny to Dublin when you book online and travel for less. Expressway, bringing you the time at... It's uh, 19, <coughs> excuse me, 19 minutes past nine. As we revealed on the show yesterday morning, 78 GPs working across Donegal come together to write a, a letter to the Minister for Health, Stephen Donnelly, calling for urgent action at the emergency department at Letterkenny University Hospital. It follows on from a meeting with hospital management where they highlighted their patient safety concerns, particularly in relation to access to services at the hospital. And we heard yesterday from um, Dr McGuinness uh, that they don't believe that the current hospital management uh, really have the uh, wherewithal to uh, make the changes that are required to ease the issue. Uh, they talked of uh, their patients not wanting to go to uh, the ED. They talked about them feeling it not safe sometimes uh, to send uh, their patients, particularly older patients, to the ED. Uh, Paddy Rooney's former assistant general manager at Letterkenny University Hospital and has accepted our invite to give us his insight into this, uh, Paddy. Um, it's a difficult one because we are all of, of, of the one community, do you know what I mean? And, and you, you know, there are individuals involved and it's it's kind of a difficult one to talk about at times, but this is so severe that, that we must. Um, it is unprecedented to have 78 GPs come together and, and put together such a strongly worded letter, Paddy. Your initial reaction to that? Well, it's not difficult to talk about it uh, at all, Gray, because it's a very... It's a very serious matter for um, everybody, and I suppose not alone for the cohort of people who are depending on the ED in Letterkenny, but also of people around the country. Because, I mean, we're only talking about Donegal here. But this has been repeated round and round. I suspect, uh, Greg, that if you uh, chose any cohort of GPs around the country, that they could equally pen a similar letter to the Minister of Health about their local hospital, and the content of it wouldn't be any different. I mean, the letter is it's it's very well constructed, and I think that very few people can argue with the content of the letter because it's expressing the deep frustration on behalf of of GPs who are looking for access to secondary care for their patients, and also about the feelings of patients themselves about their experience. But I have to say, it's also expressing the experience as well of hospital consultants. I mean, Dr. Campbell Peter was on your program within the last uh, two years more or less articulating the same thing from the receiving end. But I have to say as well that it's it's sort of, it's not in the letter, but it articulates the feeling of hospital management. And remember, I was that soldier, part of that team one time, and there was a huge frustration on our part that we felt that we didn't have the configuration and the tools to be able to meet the demand. I mean, some of my own uh, extended family members attended the emergency department during the summer and their experience in the ED, sorry to say, has been something similar to the sentiments that uh, have been expressed in the letter. Now, um, the the letter, it's a very long one and I suppose there's about three or four nuggets in the, in the middle of it, but one of the things is that, that they're looking for, um, apart from the reviews, additional resources, but they don't actually spell out what they are because and I know Jerry McMonigle, the chairman of the Western Health Forum, was on your programme yesterday too, and he was also calling for extra resources. Now, the big danger here would be that people would start putting in things, Greg, without finding out, first of all, what is the problem here? Because in the letter um, that they talk about a review of the services, I think everybody in the round is going to welcome that. And I'm talking about hospital. I haven't spoken to anybody now in the last 24 hours about this in the hospital, but... Hospital management will greet this warmly, and so will uh, hospital consultants. And, I mean, at the centre of all this, uh, Dr McGuinness said it yesterday, and it's in the letter, about putting patient at the centre and about uh, timely access to care for them. I mean, there's something odd going on in the round here, uh, Greg, and by that I mean 
you had a nice sort of a folksy, uh, warm interview with Dr. McGuinness yesterday, which was fine. And he articulated all his points very well, and you could argue with very little with them. But there's something going on about demand, whatever, about supply here. And nobody can answer that question, but these are things that are going to have to be answered, and hopefully they will be in the review. And what I'm talking about here is that over the last 30 years, there's been a 400% increase in the number of referrals and uh, tenancies at the emergency department in Letterkenny. And that cannot be explained away by the increase in population because the last two census didn't prove that. We lost a TD in the, in the general election here in 2011. Mm. We didn't get it back because the population didn't increase. But just in that. relation to that, Paddy, and I know you, you, you've, it's a thought out, well thought out point that you'll want to continue. We heard from Dr McGuinness yesterday, regardless of the tone of the interview, uh, he, he said, was it 5% of, of, of patients uh, that visit GP practices are referred? We've also speak to, spoken to people within the ED Um who, who say the majority of people that are there need to be there. I mean, that, yeah, that, that, I, I, when I was yeah, told that straight I, up, they're yeah, like, so in I, other words, you, you know, they, they need to be there. The, the people we talk about, when we talk about waiting lists, it's people waiting to get a bed in the hospital. They're not there twiddling it, it, their it phones. Is, it is the need to be there, but it's, it's not an extraordinary thing that uh, we will have about 200 people will attend the emergency department in Letterkenny today. And is anybody trying to suggest that they are 200 People that require uh, emer the emergency. No, but if someone's got if someone's yeah, but door. if someone's got a cut on their hand that requires uh, stitches, when I cut my wrist, uh, 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 my upper wrist on a piece of glass uh, years and years ago, I got stitched up in the uh, in the hospital in Donegal Town. You did, but that's not the hospital. That's not the fault now of hospital. No, I'm not saying, but it's but a lot of the people in the, a lot of people. This is of this course is why this is why Greg that the people are going to welcome the review because there's everything but everything. I mean, how do you explain the fact that there's 52,000 people attended the emergency department last year when there was only 12,000? Uh, it's interesting to note as well, by the way, I'm not bashing the GPs, but I'm, I'm talking about things in the round here about what needs to be done to fix this. Uh, there were 79 GPs signed uh, the letter and they provide, uh, you know, a very valuable service nine to five, Monday to Friday. But for the other 28 hours of the week, Greg, that drops down to three. Um, I mean, that must mean something, or does it mean anything? And I mean, Dr. Dennis McCauley, the spokesperson for the Irish College of GP, said in your programme last year, and he repeated it on, on RTE TV as well, about the GPs now, because of the pressure they're under now, they've breached the same-day appointment rule. Um, there's anecdotal evidence coming through that people are not getting timely access to GP care either. And they're voting with their feet. I don't... I don't, I don't, I listened to what Dr. McGuinness said yesterday of people that are uh, afraid to go to GP, but they're coming in their droves and they're going up. There's an extra twelve to 1,500 year on year. Not be that long, Greg, we'll be at 100,000 people and be attending the emergency department as the way they're going. So a review is very, very welcome to deal with your cut hand and everything else that there's going to be, have to be a mechanism in place to have ED avoidance, uh, put in place and alternatives to it because the, the demand is too great. And I suppose the other thing that Dr. McGuinness said, which I was very disappointed in, uh, I know you pressed him on the point about the confidence in hospital management here to be able to respond to this. I mean, hospital management, I've spoken to you before about this, they actually have their hands tied behind their back in dealing with this because GPs know, hospital consultants know, and the hospital management knows what needs to be put mm -hmm. in place to be able to respond to this. And Dr. McGuinness made one val very valuable point yesterday about the reopening of the medical assessment unit. And in order for that to work, though, because in the medical assessment unit, my experience was now, because I'm out of the place for six years, so things may be different now, but medical referrals, uh, which are the most complex that uh, come to a hospital, they start to drift in around 11 or 12 o'clock and the last of them come around, slows down at around 7 to 8 o'clock in the evening. But just because somebody comes in at 7 to 8, you have to process them and so on and so forth. But because hospital consultants, it doesn't matter if you have a 1,000 consultants in the hospital, they're all off mm. duty at 5 o'clock. There's only a small cohort on call. They've worked that day. Mm -hmm. They have to go into work the next day, so they can't be there all of the time. So you have a situation then, Greg, that you're going to have GPs... I know a lot of the names on that list. They're very experienced. They've got a high skill set. 
and they're referring patients into the medical assessment unit to be seen by junior doctors with nowhere near level of experience and nowhere near level of skill set as the people that has referred them. And a lot of the tools that the doctors in the hospital and the clinical staff need to be able to see the patients, they're all switched off at five o'clock. I get that. And, 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 uh, and I made, hospital, uh, and the, uh, I made important that point here, though, yep. Greg, is the hospital management have no capacity mm. to be able to fix that. Yeah, of course because they don't. But, they could, but I said, to, but in a later, a later interview with Councillor Jerry McMonagall, I put it to him, why is that Why is that information not communicated to people who are sitting in AD for 12 hours when the services that you talk of are closed? They're thinking, right, are we going to get cold soon? Well, you know you're not because it's 8 o'clock at night and they don't reopen until 8. That kind of information could be reiterated. But let me put it to you like this, though. Uh, and as I say, I'm not in, I, I want to work with people in whatever role we have here to improve things but if we've got gps that are saying that we're not we don't want to send we have to make a clinical decision whether sending a patient to the ed would actually uh, worsen their outcome they could potentially die from that um and then we have people that are sitting there for 36 hours uh older people sitting there for 24 hours a terrible state of affairs okay is it not about time then that hospital management came out and not say, oh, hands are tied, there's nothing we can do about it. This is potentially life and death. Is it not about time then that they made it very, very clear how their hands are tied, what is lacking for them, and call it out? Now, that might not be very good professionally, but we're talking about life and death here, Paddy. So, that you, you, you know, I appreciate you coming on, right? But we hear this from you. Where, why don't we hear this from the management that says, look, at, we see what's going on in this hospital, we, we, oh, but our hands are tied. There's nothing we can do. Well, uh, uh, the answer to that, I suppose, is fairly obvious because if I was still working in the hospital, I would be having this frank conversation with you like I'm having now. And I can't remember, was it about four or five years ago, there was five CEOs of the major teaching hospitals in Dublin issued a joint statement about the level of safe care. And it was like the matter at the moment of the St. Vincent's. And they were all officially sanctioned by the chief executive of the HSE at the time. And they were told not to do it again. Do you remember that? You can Google that. It. I can't remember the names of the guys and so on. I mean, because they don't have the permission and the and the, the wherewithal to do that, uh, that's why. Um, and it wouldn't be a career-enhancing move to do that. So do you um, think these GPs and, but, have thrown the hospital manager, the management team under the bus then on this? Well, I think that what Dr. McGuinness said to you yesterday was unfortunate because if he, if he wants to lay the blame somewhere, I'm afraid he's going to have to go somewhere else to do it. I mean, we've had a very complex uh, Slauncher Care report to deal with this, and there's about it's about 800 pages long. And we're well into the... There was supposed to be a 10-year rollout of that program. I don't know what's happened to it. People will blame, blame COVID, I suppose, for it being derailed, but it's not achieve it because the demand keeps going up and up all the time but the capacity of the hospitals and the configuration about the way the services are provided are not changing Greg. I mean I'm grey in the face saying on this program over the last five years about the fact that hospitals need to be switched over to a 24-7 model and then give the hospital some chance of being able to deal with because they have to deal with efficiencies in the first case rather than putting in extra resources. It's a pity you didn't ask Councillor McMonagall yesterday when you talked about additional resources. What exactly is he talking about? Because more beds is not going to fix anything here. It's about efficiencies. It's about the patients in the hospital that have been medically discharged already by the hospital consultant. Is it hospitals management fault that there's seven or 800 patients up and down the country warehousing in hospitals at the moment because there's nowhere for them to go? No, no and we've teased that out before. But, but then, right, you talk about if you poll GPs in, in, in various parts of the country, um, that, that that you would hear similar messages. But what then is it about Donegal that we have uh, some of the longest waiting times in AD, that we have, um, we, we are consistently one of the most overcrowded hospitals in, in the country, that we have some of the slowest ambulance response times, that we have 14 ambulances queued up outside the hospital. Uh, now, that is an extreme uh, occurrence, but it does happen. There are unique elements to the, the crisis at Letterkenny University Hospital, or not unique, uh, but, but, you know, that are worse than elsewhere. Are you saying that that 
What, what is well, it? I, I, I can't answer that. And I don't want to be coming across, because I'm outside of the system now for six years, and I don't want to be trying to uh, justify the awfulness, because I said at the very outset that our, my own family experience was consistent with what's in the letter, and that, that there's no lies or anything like that. It is real. But what I'm saying is that uh, a simplistic fix about, uh, you know, passing a no confidence motion and the hospital manager on opening the medical assessment unit will do nothing to fix this. It is much more uh, complex and multifaceted uh, than it, because I'll tell you what, when I was on your program during the summer, we were talking about RTE. And if you remember, Greg, I said to you, I'm sort of less interested about what's coming out of RTE. I'm more interested about what the response is going to be. Well, I'm going to really love this one to see about A, if the GPs get a meeting with the Minister of Health. And I see Robert Watt has CC'd into them. Good luck to them with that. And about the CEO of, of Celta, because they're all in the mix here. If they think for one minute that the solution to this is internal to the hospital only, and, and I fear that that's a very simplistic view on it. Let's see, will the cavalry arrive, arrive here then with the CEO of Celta and the CEO of the, of the HSE and the Minister of Health and fix it? Let's see what comes out of that. And it'll be very interesting to vi revisit this in about six months' time. And the other thing, I suppose, um, that... Dr. McGuinness said to you yesterday about, and I, I fully agree with them, about doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different outcome, that that's silly and that they won't be put off this time and they will take to the streets. Well, you know, I hope that Mary T. Sweeney, the into representative in the area, was listening to that because she tried to organise a, a public demonstration in July of last year mm. about the overcrowding in the hospital and what was happening in ED, and she got less than yeah, 100 but there's people. A, there's a fundamental problem there in, in that it, it, any politically led, even if you say in advance that it's not political, any political led uh, protest... If it's saying to Fianna Fáil, Fianna Gael, Fáil, if sure. the GPs uh, uh, look, look what look what uh, Professor Mulpeter achieved, uh, because he was not political, and he had uh, people lined up right around the hospital. If the GPs call a protest and say they'll lead it, I suspect I, I would not be surprised if it were in the low thousands of people that would come out to that party. Well, I, I I hope so. I hope that success because I am at the age now, for instance. Uh, Greg, that because I'm retired and I'm at the age that I fall into the category of people now that's going to be uh, overusing the health service and I may well end up being a person or a patient in ED and I don't want to have to wait there for 36 hours. So I hope that something comes of this. The only point that I'm making here is that it's it's not going to... Okay. The solution that is not in turn to the hospital is much better than that. So what then, for finally, is it is it ch changing it to a level four hospital? Is it... Uh, you know, because there are loads of positions advertised and funded, but they can't recruit. Uh, there has to be a solution, though, Paddy. Uh, well, you know, I know the, it's not. The, I know the, it's the, not the, easy. Uh, there, the, in in the letter, it mentions the word radical, and Dr. McGuinness said to you yesterday, radical, radical, looks like something like this. It looks like examining the the breadth and the depth of. Uh, primary care service in this hospital to try and keep back the low complexity stuff that's coming to the emergency department. Radical looks like having senior decision making, I'm talking about hospital consultants in the different in the in the major specialties in the hospital, boots on the ground from eight AM until about ten o'clock at night, seven days a week. That's going to call cause for extra consultants. It radical means that the tools that they need to be able to about the respiratory lab to have to have pulmonary function tests about the cardiac investigation to do cardiac echoes and mm. stress tests and whatever else they need about having OT assessment having physio assessment having MRI available okay. having CT readily available that's what radical looks like but I don't think we're going to right. get that because so, hospital management won't get approval to put that in place okay and I asked a, a direct question of the doctor yesterday and asked you a, a, a direct question as well to some extent and I think you maybe have hinted at this through the course of the interview do you think GPS are deflecting and perhaps need to take a look at uh, take a, a closer look at, uh, at at the role they may be playing in this I don't I don't know because I'm not close enough to it but if there if this review and the round is done properly and it's done fairly it's going to have a look at it I mean there's anecdotal evidence coming through now that the people out there are having difficulty in getting timely access to a GP 
a lot of, uh, not all of it, but a lot of primary care services have not returned to pre-COVID level. Um, I mean, there's only certain things that GPs can do, there's certain things that they have to pass on, but the, the low complexity of level, I mean, the sheer volume of people going through. See, a lot of the people, the, the problem in ED too is congested because the exit routes out of it are are, are blocked. Um, the problem is manifest in ED, but it's not an ED problem we have in this country. It's just what it's what happens before and it's what happens after is the problem. Okay. As always, Paddy, thank you very much indeed. I appreciate your time. Okay, uh, right. Paddy Rooney, he's a former assistant general manager at Letterkenny University Hospital. Watch the show live now on YouTube, Facebook and at highlandradio.com. The Nine Till Noon Show is brought to you by Letterkenny Credit Union with monster loans available up to €60,000 for all occasions. Visit letterkennycu.ie. Tickets! Get your tickets! Arsenal, Chelsea, Leeds, Liverpool, Manchester United, Spurs and more. Home games and all the goals scored. Don't be shy, only takes a minute to win it. It's Cadbury FC's biggest football ticket giveaway ever, plus thousands of other prizes to be won every game week. Just head to matchtheminute.cadburyfc.com to get your match minute. If a goal's scored in that minute, you win. Enter today. T's and C's apply. Chagas are holding an information evening focusing on the establishment of grants of the new forestry programme. This meeting will take place in the Chagas office in Letterkenny on Wednesday the 11th of October starting at 7.30pm. Chagas encourages anyone who is considering establishing a forest to attend as important changes to the forestry grant structures have been introduced. Get your forestry questions answered. Don't miss this important forestry meeting on Wednesday the 11th of October at 7.30pm. All are welcome. Tenny's Toys, Ireland's largest farm toy superstore, isn't just about farm toys. We've loads of fun outdoor toys for kids, such as electric scooters, crazy carts, electric quads, jeeps, tractors and so much more. Hassle-free parking at the door with no traffic jams. Our Christmas club is now open too and a wee deposit secures your item. Tinny's Toys, Leck Road, Letter Kenny or online at tinnystoys.com. Lay down. Restex Beds and Furniture's special offer for this month only. They're giving a free pack of hotel-grade pillows for every customer when you buy a bed or mattress. Tease them, see supply while stocks last. Call into their showroom at Restex Beds, Mountaintop, Letterkenny. Hey there, folks of Letterkenny. Mark your calendars. It's the Letterkenny Motor Show, happening on Saturday the 14th of October on a pedestrianised Lower Main Street. Come and explore the latest car models, enjoy fun activities for the whole family, and discover incredible deals that will get you on the road in style. It's the perfect family day out and we can't wait to see you there. The Letterkenny Motor Show is brought to you by the local franchised motor dealers and proudly supported by First Citizen Finance, Letterkenny Chamber, Donegal County Council, the Society of Irish Motor Industry and FBD Insurance. Visit letterkennymotorshow.ie for more details. Okay, you're very welcome back uh, to the Nine Till Noon show here on Highland Radio. Now we are going to uh, speak to um, people affected by uh, what's seen as terrible news or what is terrible news this week. 18 families in uh, Ballymacool Estate have received eviction notices from uh, the developer, landlord. Uh, they say they uh, the company um, situation has changed and they are selling... Uh, the properties. Now, we've uh, contacted the company in question or the individual in question, and as of yet, uh, we've had uh, nothing back from them. Uh, Cahill uh, McFlynn is chair of the Ballamacool Residents Association. Thanks for joining us, Cahill. Good morning, Greg. Thanks for having us on. So this has uh, come somewhat out of the blue, or completely out of the blue, I suppose. Hi, Greg. Uh, th this came out of the blue to all these families uh, at the end of last week. Where they were all issued with um, eviction notices uh, to uh, vacate their houses, so that the houses, uh, the so that the developer could sell the houses. Um, we have uh, we have now at least nineteen families with uh, we think more that have yet to come forward that haven't contacted us. But I, I'm the chair of the residents association out there. So over the weekend, we started getting um, a lot of a lot of messages uh, through our Facebook uh, site. Um, from these families who were uh, who have been issued with the notices, you know. So obviously, we have a lot of um, 
worry and anger and frustration at, at the fact that uh, these families are now facing homelessness. Um, it's it's uh, we, we think it's it's just an awful situation. You know, with the way things are at the minute, there's no accommodation out there for these families. Um, with you know mica that's going on and with the state of the the country at the minute, uh, we're in a, we're in the midst of a housing crisis, mm-hmm. and these families are uh, although it's eviction notices, they are in reality facing homelessness where they have no place to go. We've been looking on um, daft.ie, for example, for uh, to see how many. Uh, premises are available for rent in the locality so we have basically 15 15 uh, properties that are available for rent around the area but none of these uh, uh, none of these properties are affordable for working class families at the end of the day so we we have been in touch with and working closely with uh, councillor Neil Collum Miguel Asbog who has been in contact with Donegal County Council uh, housing manager Nader Kenny for us to ask that staff are available to meet and support uh, these unfortunate families. Um, we have also been working closely with uh, with CATU, who are the uh, the uh, Community Action and Tenants Union, and we've had some constructive discussion with them. Is the so option they're also of, coming, uh, is, the, is it the option been raised of <coughs> the council purchasing these uh, properties? Not all of these uh, families are on the council housing uh, list, so um, we're hoping to work. Uh, that we're hoping that the council will uh, facilitate a meeting so that we can address and meet and support all the issues uh, that the families are facing at the minute. So that's what we have requested from the uh, county council housing manager that he can meet uh, with all the families and see if that is an option that the council will be able to purchase at least some of them and uh, keep these families in their homes. Yeah, I'll come back to you, Carl. Stay where you are because uh, Alexandra is a resident in Ballymacool. Alexandra, thank you for joining us this morning. No problem, thank you at all. Uh, when did you get uh, the letter and, and what was your reaction uh, when you when you read it? So basically around 20 families received letter last week. Uh, we all were in shock. Nobody expected that, uh, especially that, you know, our landlord is going to build another 52 houses on our estate. So nobody was expecting that letter at all. Uh, we all are in shock. We all are very stressful because it's also just before Christmas time. You know, that's our community here and all the kids are playing together. We all know each other. We all can lean on each other. And it's just a very difficult situation for all of us. And everyone has their own things in life that make it, you know, even more difficult. Yours is is that uh, you have a child you're expecting and this eviction... Yes, would I, yes I'm, I'm due in March, so basically the same month that I have to move out because we have to leave the house till April. Yeah. And do you see any uh, any any hope? I mean, we heard from Cahill there about the lack of availability of, of, of property. Yes, as Cahill said, it's only 15 houses available for renting letter can at the minute. And at the moment, around 20 families on our estate only received the letter to move out. So basically, some of us will have to be homeless. Our kids are already very stressed. You know, they are. They were playing yesterday, and they were asking, "Mommy, Daddy, are we going to be homeless?" So it's it's very stressful for all of us. Uh, I'll come back to you, Cahill. In terms of of, of twin estates who, who were selling these properties, uh, in the letters uh, they recognise the, the 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 difficulty uh, this uh, presents, uh, but also how their situation has changed. Uh, they say, uh, I'll offer you the opportunity to reoccupy the dwelling under tenancy if we do not uh, sell the house. Uh, several tenants have expressed an interest in purchasing the houses. They say they're happy uh, to explore that further. And also that they've spoken to other accommodation providers who've indicated that they have alternative premises and are willing to help where necessary. Uh, so why does that, in your view, cattle not go far enough? Or, or why well, does that the, not... This, this is... 
th- this is another letter, uh, Greg, that uh, that they sent around the households yesterday evening. Uh-huh. Um, and, and I think what they're trying to do there is just soften the blow. I mean, they're saying that the, uh, these families can move back into their houses if they're not sold. Where are they supposed to go in the, in the interim? Meantime, yeah. Are they supposed to put, in the meantime, are they meant to put tents up in Ballymacool Park and stay in the tents and wait and see if their house is sold out from under them or not before they can move back in? You know, that's it's just not realistic. Uh, the developer there has other properties um, in the town. He, he states that he has other properties that he's uh, that he's renovating and, and that they could possibly move on to them. Why doesn't he sell the properties that he's renovating and keep the families in their homes? I think that's just uh, that's just trying to soften the blow, really, of 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 the of 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 what is happening here. You know, What's the fact? I mean, very, very obviously, close... you know. These are families that are settled where they're they're settled. They've they're, they've got friends and neighbours. Their their children the same. Maybe maybe the the, the access to schools. It, even just moving to the other end of town, even if that were an option, it's you know it still changes the dynamic of Greg, that community. Yeah. Absolutely, a lot of these families have been living in the estate for over fourteen years. You know, their children go to the local schools, they go to the local creches, they're working together, you know, their friends and families and all living beside each other. It's a close-knit community. And even if they were to be rehoused or rehomed somewhere else, you're dividing and splitting that community up and, and, and putting them to, you know, they don't even know if they're going to be in Letterkenny. If they have to get a house, it could be in a different town. So you're totally separating these people and, and breaking the community up. So it, it really isn't an acceptable situation. You know, we've never seen the likes of this before. Um, I've been the chair of uh, where the, 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 the Ballymacool Residence Estate uh, Committee has been in place for over 10 years, and we've never, ever experienced mm. anything like this before. And Al- Alexandra, what you have is uncertainty. You don't know where you're, you're going to end up or how you're going to end up there, uh, especially at a time, as you say, when you're you know, looking after young children and, and, and pregnant uh, and, and eviction due around the time the baby is. Uh, it must be very stressful for you and the family. It is, uh, you know, instead of um, having a good time now, planning everything and just being happy, we are very stressful because um, also like 90% of these families here who received letters is uh, from Poland. So, you know, even we don't have like families here or um, any places to move even for a while till we'll find another house to rent or buy or uh, we'll get council house. So it's very stressful for all, for all of us. And, you know, like um, our kids are also going to local schools here or play schools. Not all the, not everyone is driving. Not everyone has a car. It will be, and you know, buses are coming here to collect kids for school. So um, it's just, it will be just very difficult for all of us. Okay, Alexandra, uh, thank you. So, Cahill, finally, I mean, this is privately owned property uh, and, and, and whoever owns it has given the reasons as to why they want to sell it. Uh, the evictions are within um, w- whether people agree with them or not to sell the property. Uh, you, you know, there is no eviction ban at the moment, so they're perfectly in, entitled to do that. So, and, and you mentioned the options, but what do you see as the solution here? Uh, if if the person who owns these properties is determined to sell them, and I know you mentioned some options, but what do you see as the solution? Well, uh, pre- presently or <clears throat> right now, um, our focus is on keeping these families in their homes for as long as we can. Uh, we will be uh, speaking to uh, the council housing manager again. Um, we will be contacting Threshold. We have different avenues that we're going to go down. We need to speak to the RTB uh, to see um, if all this is legal and above board first. Um, we will be going through each individual case uh, because, you know, although it is a, a, a large number of families, each each uh, case is individual, so we'll have to look at all of them. And, um, you know, what we want or what, what we would like to happen is for um, Twin Estates to, uh, to reverse their decision to uh, uh, ask these families to vacate their homes and uh, to keep the families in their homes. Okay, I'm sure it's a story we're going to hear more of. Cahill, thanks for your time. Uh, I appreciate it. Alexandra, thank you. If anyone else wants to get involved in that conversation, 0866 60 25,000. The Nine Till Noon Show with Letterkenny Credit Union. Simplify your debts with a debt consolidation loan from Letterkenny Credit Union. Call us on 074 910 2126 or apply online via our app or in office today. 
Giveblood.ie know we can count on you, our community of blood donors, to be there for others in their hour of need. Blood donors from Killybegs should attend the clinic in the Tara Hotel in Killybegs on Monday 9th of October. And donors from Donegal and Dunlow should attend the clinic in the Abbey Hotel in Donegal Town from Tuesday 10th to Thursday 12th. Making an appointment is recommended, so call 1-800-731-137 or visit our website to book your time. New donors are vital. Visit giveblood.ie to check eligibility and clinic details because we count on you. Get more, pay even less. Download the Lidl Plus app now. Tap to activate your coupons and cut costs with exclusive super savers like Irish carrots, now 49 cent, and Board B approved Irish chicken breast fillets, now 5.79. Just scan those Lidl Plus coupons at the till. Go on, get more, pay even less. Go full Lidl today. Looks like we're in for a cold spell. Perfect weather to chill out in a steaming seaweed bath on Sligo shores. Talk of scattered showers too. Perfect weather for sea swimming off the coast of Waterford. Sure you're already wet? It's fierce windy out there. Perfect weather to be swept off your feet on a romantic weekend in Cork <laughs> City. Whatever the weather, it's always perfect weather to keep discovering. With great short breaks forecast right across Ireland, plan your next one now at discoverireland.ie. Every Volvo Mid goes through a rigorous quality check process before it leaves the factory. Every pre-owned Volvo available through our Volvo Select program goes through that same process again with all the quality, power and guarantee you expect from Volvo. Own a pre-owned all-electric Volvo C40 or XC40 Recharge with a minimum 12-month unlimited mileage warranty and Volvo assistance as standard. Get used cars recharged at McGinley Motors. Search Volvo Select or visit volvocost.ie. Terms and conditions apply. Donegal GAA fans, don't miss the Michael Murphy Sports Sale starting this Wednesday the 11th. There's 30% of all official Donegal GAA leisure wear. Show your support for Donegal in style and grab your favourite leisure wear at unbeatable prices. Hurry, the sale is for a limited time with free next day delivery on orders over €85. Euro. See michaelmurphysports.ie Highland Radio weather updates with Ireland West Airport, where you can now fly daily to London Heathrow with Aer Lingus and connect via Heathrow to over 80 destinations worldwide, including Boston, New York and more. Okie doke, I have to open up the weather forecast now because I was distracted by a certain Caroline Orr. Uh, so the weather forecast for today, last of the warmish kind of days, I think, you know. Outbreaks of rain and drizzle this morning. More persistent rain will develop in the northwest towards evening. Tracking south eastwards, warm and humid. Temperatures 7 or 18 degrees, becoming breezy with moderate to fresh and gusty southwest winds. And if you've anything planned for the weekend, it's looking middling, not as warm, but settled. Uh, we shall see. A caller says, I understand the crisis, but let's not forget these are renters. The owner is entitled to do as he pleases. And we're getting to a place where anyone who buys anything these days is not entitled to do as he pleases. With it, every business person in the world buys and sells to multiply. It's ridiculous that these renters think they have a sense of entitlement. It's no wonder so many landlords are leaving the field. Um... Did I hear correctly, uh, Paddy Rooney, say that the HSC, HSC bosses warn management of all the hospitals to keep their mouths shut? Well, not quite. What he said was is that there were uh, a, a number of hospital managers in Dublin that came together. Uh, they were reprimanded for doing so. And uh, Paddy, thank, and I don't, I don't want to misquote him, but I think he says that... Um, it might not necessarily be a good career move uh, to speak out. Well, this uh, caller says that effectively throws patients under the bus in order to save jobs, and that says a lot about the calibre of uh, hospital managers that we have in Irish hospitals, that they're so easily uh, cowed. Um, I mean, that's, that's, that's your assessment of it, and I appreciate your uh, text. Many thanks to the honest person who handed in the money to Don Stores yesterday from the person who lost it. It was hugely appreciated as it would have been a huge loss. Really encouraging. That is uh, good to hear. And fair play to the person that handed it in. All right, it is the Nine Till Noon show. Community Guard information and so much more besides coming up in the next two hours of the programme. But now we're going to take a break for the news and obituary notices. The 9 Till Noon Show with Letterkenny Credit Union. Now offering mortgages from €40,000 to €600,000 with no hidden fees or transaction charges. Letterkenny Credit Union, 9102127. The Donegal Texel Breeders will hold a sale of 45 rams in Rafu Livestock Mart this Friday, 13th of October at 7pm. Online bidding via the Mart Bids app. That's this Friday at Rafu Mart. 
Keep out the cold, cold, cold. And ring Fleming for their full range of garage doors, agri doors, insulated doors, milking parlour doors. Fleming, 91 48 234. Raymond Sweeney here to let you know about some great value laptops we now have in stock, like the super affordable Ventura Europa, powered by an Intel seller and processor, ideal for studying, e-learning, and keeping up to date with the latest news for just 249. Also, the super fast Avita Pure Laptop with a Ryzen 5 processor, 8 gigs of RAM, 256 gigs of storage for only 399. Check out these and other great value laptops now at Ben Sweeney Euronics in Letterkenny and Dunlow. The Cassidy's here in Von Doren used to often wonder Is this a good time to use the dishwasher? When they signed up to ESV Networks, is this a good time program? They learned that there's more renewable electricity available when it's windy out which helps us all on our journey to a clean electric future. Right, is everything good? Go to esbnetworks.ie slash time to sign up today. ESB Networks, energising your everything. Santa's Elves, listen up. If a kid's playhouse is on your little one's wish list this Christmas, Dealside Garden Furniture has you covered. Explore our range in various colours and sizes, including the Dreamy Barbie Dreamhouse Pink. Orders close on December 2nd. Find us on social media, Dealside Garden Furniture, or call 087 the Connolly Motor Group 2024 Donegal Motor Show continues with Cooper Sligo at Canal Road, Letterkenny from the 10th to the 14th of October. Test drive the 241 Cooper range including the Cooper Fermenter SUV to the 100% electric Cooper Born. Drive into 2024 with your brand new Cooper from Connolly Motor Group. For more information, visit Connolly's.ie. On air, online, and on the Highland Radio app, this is Highland Radio News. Good morning, it's Donna Marie Doherty with the news at 10 o'clock. 18 families in Letterkenny have received eviction notices. The homes located in the Ballymacool estate are being sold due to a change in the developer's company that holds the rental agreement. Cahill McFinn, chair of Ballymacool Residents Association, spoke to Greg Hughes this morning on the Nintel Noon Show. He says there's very little accommodation available for rent in the area and what is there is simply not affordable. We've been looking on um, daft.ie, for example, for uh, to see how many uh, premises are available for rent in the locality. So we have basically 15, 15 uh, properties that are available for rent around the area, but none of these uh, uh, none of these properties are affordable for working class families. At the end of the day, the Taoiseach says today's budget will be one that will benefit nearly all workers. The Minister for Finance and Public Expenditure will announce the details this lunchtime. Andrew Louth reports. One of the changes to be announced in the budget this afternoon will be in the income tax brackets with the higher rate entry point going up to €42,000. There will also be changes to USC rates, but Taoiseach Leo Varadkar denies they will only impact higher income earners. The income tax package with Minister McGraw will announce the detail of later involves increases in tax credits, reductions in the USC uh, and also um, reductions in income tax, so that will benefit uh, pretty much all workers. There's also due to be a package of one-off measures which will cost around $2.3 billion in euro. They will include supports for pensioners, carers, people with disabilities and working families, while there will be €450 euro in total worth of energy credits in three instalments of €150. Euro. Public Expenditure Minister Pascal who says the package is not as big as last year, but still necessary. While inflation is still present in all of our lives, it is growing at a slower pace than it did a year ago. So the budget is of a different scale, uh, but it is still by historical standards a big budget. There will also be another cut to childcare costs, free school books up to junior cycle and hikes to a packet of cigarettes. Andrew Lyard, Leinster House. It's hoped that threats of a blue flu over Garda rostering complaints have now been put to bed with an interim roster for the force set to be implemented shortly. The four main Garda representative organisations met with management yesterday and agreed on a deal that will avoid seeing members return to their pre-COVID roster on the 6th of November. The development was welcomed by the Justice Minister Helen McEntee, who says the interim roster will ensure Garda can continue to deliver the service to the public. President of the GRA, Brendan O'Connor, says both sides will return to the negotiating table shortly to work on a more permanent solution. Well, there's a commitment on all sides to find a speedy resolution, as I say. 
what we have on the table for discussion as um, as a starting point is very close to what we believe is the future and will satisfy the needs of our members. Residents and businesses in Bally Shannon and the surrounding areas may experience water outages today as planned leak detection works proceed. Works will begin in about an hour's time and will last until 6am tomorrow morning. Meanwhile, a burst water main may cause supply disruptions to Minagori, Umricam, Shandrum, Desert Nategi and Bunkrana. Those repairs are underway and are due to finish at 4 o'clock this afternoon. Ishka Erin are urging the public to allow for up to three hours after the works have finished to allow for supplies to fully return turn. Police are appealing for information and witnesses following recent thefts from chemists in Castle Derg and Strabane over the weekend. It's believed two men aged in their mid-twenties to thirties were involved in three incidents. Tara Duggan reports. It was reported on Saturday afternoon, shortly after 25 to 2, that two men entered a chemist in the John Street area of Castle Derg and stole eight candles and made off on foot. The first man is described as wearing a light blue sports top and grey bottoms. He was wearing silver jewellery and had tattoos on his left forearm. He was also carrying a black bag. The second man was also wearing all black clothing. As part of police inquiries, they're linking the theft to a second occurrence on Saturday afternoon at approximately half past three. It was reported the first man entered a chemist in the Main Street area of Straban and took five perfume sets from the premises. He's believed to have also entered another chemist in the Upper Main Street area of the town, but was challenged by staff and left without taking anything. Those with information, including mobile phone or CCTV footage, are being asked to contact police. Looking to weather outbreaks of rain and drizzle this morning. More persistent rain will develop in the northwest towards the evening, tracking southeastwards. Warm and humid with highest temperatures of 17 or 18 degrees, becoming breezier with moderate to fresh and gusty southwest winds. That's all for now. The next news update is at 11 o'clock. In the meantime, keep up to date on our website, hydrantradio.com. From myself and the news team, good morning. The obituary notices this Tuesday morning, October 10th. The death has taken place of Anthony Murray, Arden Edition, Manor Cunningham, remains reposing at his home. Wake today and tomorrow from 1pm until after the rosary. Rosary each night at 9 o'clock. Requiem Mass on Thursday at 11am in the Church of All Saints, Newton Cunningham burial afterwards in the adjoining cemetery. Mass can be viewed on churchservices.tv. House private to family only on the morning of the funeral. Family flowers only. The death has taken place of Arnie White, Rossview House, Letterkenny Road Convoy. Remains are reposing at his late residence. Service at his home tomorrow at 2pm with burial afterwards in St Ninian's Church Graveyard. Family time, please, from 11pm to 11am and on the morning of the funeral. Family flowers only. Donations in lieu if desired to the Society of St Vincent de Paul. Care of any family member or Terence McClintock Funeral Director. The death has taken place of John McGarvey, 41 Rosemount Kilmacrennan, formerly Barnes Terman. Remains will repose at his home from 5pm this evening. Requiem Mass on Thursday at 3 o'clock in St Columbus Church, Kilmacrennan. Burial afterwards in the adjoining cemetery. Mass can be viewed on churchservices.tv. Family time from 10pm until 11am and on the morning of the funeral. Family flowers only. Donations if desired to the family room ICU Galway University Hospital. Care of any family member or Patrick Sweeney Funeral Director. The death has taken place of Mina White, 26 Muckle Hill View, Castle Derg, formerly of Knock Gannon, Convoy. Her remains are reposing at her late residence, with funeral from there this afternoon at 12.30 for one o'clock funeral service in Drumlega Presbyterian Church, followed by burial afterwards in the family plot in the adjoining graveyard. Family time, please, before the funeral today. Family flowers only, please. Donations in lieu to Drumlega Presbyterian Church Building Fund. Care of any family member or Terence McClintock Funeral Director. For more details regarding wakes and funerals, please go to highlandradio.com.
So you're saying mental health difficulties can be smaller things? Yeah. Like trouble sleeping? Yeah. Or if I'm always stressed, like? Yeah. Or often anxious? They're all part of your mental health. Hmm. Thought those were separate. Nope. They're all connected. Hey, how do you know all this anyway? Ah, sure, I've been there myself. Anxiety, ongoing stress, low mood or trouble sleeping, they're all part of your mental health. Make the connection and find support that can help at yourmentalhealth.ie. From the HSE. The county's number one talk show, the Nine Till Noon Show on Highland Radio. And you're very welcome back to the Nine Till Noon Show. Coming up very shortly, we'll have community guard information for you. Just to catch up on a, a couple of the comments, though, my son sat 18 hours in the ED waiting on a bed to have her operation for an appendix. Um, they believe that was too long. Maybe we should ask uh, the nurses and care assistants how they would fix the problem, hear their voices instead of listening to higher management all of the time. Well, they are precluded from being able to speak out uh, publicly. And also, uh, under the new consultant's contract, the gag's been put on consultants as well. So we've uh, had the insight in the past of of, um, of consultants who were obviously in a senior position and felt they could speak. Well, the, the, they can't any longer under this new consultant's contract. The gags are on them as well. Uh, hospital is open 24-7. Doctors come on to work after doctors go off work. Not strictly true, though, uh, in terms of certain uh, functions and services. Uh, another hospital up until recently, it was standard practice for a pregnant woman suffering complications to go straight to gynae and children to go straight to peds. Why did this practice change to send a woman who is suffering a potential miscarriage is barbaric? And unfortunately, we've spoken to uh, women in that exact position, an incredible stressful time for them. Uh, spent a few different times sitting in the ED and the amount of times they came out calling names that weren't even there couldn't understand why so many people would have left or went outside for air a lot of people leave before they receive treatment um, I think I don't have the stats off the top of my head uh, but it is somewhere in, it's over a thousand over four months if I'm not mistaken um, there is a CHO1 responsibility here. Where are the home helps and community beds to get delayed discharges to the right places for them? I didn't hear the 78 GPs outcry about community bed services closing. Uh, it's no wonder so many Ukrainian refugees choose, choose Ireland as their place of refuge over other EU countries. If we're paying them five times more than the rest, 220 per week is a lot of money in Ukraine. It's a lot of money anywhere. And I suppose I've said before, um, would I flee Ukraine? Possibly if I was there with my young family, the, the fear of sons being drafted in to be sent to their deaths or a bomb dropping on the roof. Uh, so I have to honestly say, would I go where I perhaps would have more money? The answer to that is probably yes too. How did Alan Shatter get more airtime on The Tonight Show last night? It looked like Podrick McLaughlin was just there to listen to a lecture from Alan Shatter on terrorists. Well, I'm kind of not interested in who says what and you condemn this and you condemn that or don't condemn it or whatever. The way I look at it is... is there is an incredible loss of life and children dying, being blown to bits. Um, what someone here thinks, I don't know, I don't really... It's not forefront of my mind anyway. OK, community guard information after these. It's time for NCBI Bingo on Highland Radio. It's Tuesday the 10th of October. You're playing on the brown sheet. The reference number is S2. It's game number 41. The numbers are 58... 81 39 8 38 6 11 64 60 and finally 74 Phone your claim to 9104833 before 8 tonight. Leaving your name, contact number and the name of the shop where you purchased your book and we'll call you back the next working day. Get all your NCBI bingo information at highlandradio.com. It's time to transform your smile with the help of Blue Poppy Dental Letter Kenny and Donegal Town. Their expert team offer orthodontics, teeth whitening, implants and composite bonding all in-house. Start your journey by calling 0749740404 or easily book your appointment online at a time that suits you through their user-friendly patient portal available anytime anywhere at bluepoppydental.com Blue Poppy Dental and Orthodontics Letter Kenny and Donegal Town Medical card patients welcome 
ocean tiles and bathrooms. Pennyburn Industrial Estate Derry. Massive stock clearance sale on tiles, vanity units, toilets, showers, taps, mirrors, radiators, shower panels, accessories and much more. Sale starts Monday 9th and ends Saturday 21st of October at Ocean Tiles and Bathrooms, Pennyburn Industrial Estate Derry. Do you need a UK address? Save hundreds of euros on custom charges shopping online with Space Hub Dairy. We provide a full virtual office address mailbox service for all your business and personal use. Save your business hundreds, possibly thousands, on custom charges with Space Hub Dairy. Call 048 7187 8077 for more details. The Brocka Perth Sheep Breeders Society will hold their annual 10th show and sale of 150 aged rams, shearlings and ram lambs in Brocka Livestock Mart this Wednesday the 11th of October, including a large number of SIS eligible rams. The show is at 3 with the sale at 5. The 9 till noon show is brought to you by Letterkenny Credit Union. Digital loans now available. Apply online or via our app today and get your loan transfer directly to your current account. The Community Garda Information Slot is brought to you by Sheridan Security Systems. Protecting what you value most. Call today and get your zero wire alarm system from €299. Euro. Sheridan Security, 9126025. Oh, OK, it is uh, 14 minutes past 10 on this Tuesday, the 10th of October. Time for Community Garda Information and we welcome back into the studio Garda Sergeant Eunan Walsh from the Letterkenny Garda Station. Eunan, thank you very much for joining us. Morning, really Greg. appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Right, let's get straight into some uh, appeals. Now, your colleagues in Ballyshannon investigating a fatal road traffic collision close to Glenties. Yes, Greg. Guardian Ballyshannon are investigating a road traffic collision which occurred last Sunday evening, the 8th of October, shortly before 4pm. The cl- collision occurred on the R262 near Glenties, uh, a one-vehicle collision involved, involving a motorcycle which was travelling from Glenties to, towards Glenties from Donegal Town. The motorcyclist, who has been named as Arnie White from Convoy, received medical attention to the scene, but was pronounced dead a short time later. And our thoughts and prayers are with Arnie's family and friends at this difficult and sad occasion. So the Guardian Ballyshannon are appealing for any person who have witnessed the collision to contact again at Ballyshannon Garda Station 07198 58530. That's 07198 58530. Or again, the confidential line one 800 one or again, any Garda station, Greg. So again, road users with camera footage, including dash cam, who are travelling in the area at the time, are asked to make it available to the Garda. OK. Now, uh, a burglary in Letterkenny being investigated. Yes, this is a burglary that occurred last Friday evening at approximately 10.30pm, Greg, uh, at the rear of Letterkenny Retail Park, at the rear in the area of Marks and Spencers, so where you can drive around the back there. So 110 loading food wheels from the rear of the retail park were stolen. So these are these green <coughs> green loading trays that mm. you see on trolleys okay. uh, for storing food. So they're left out overnight and 110 were stolen. So the estimated value is up to €5,000. There was so substantial loss there. Um, we are interested in a white transit van, which was seen in the area at the time. Partial reg PHZ. So a white transit van PHZ was seen in the area at the time last Friday night at approximately 10.30pm. Again, Guardian Letter Kinney, if you, anybody's information, please contact us at 07491 67100 or again the confidential line 1800 treble 6 treble 1. Or maybe anybody who's dash cam in the area at the time to check it or bring it forward to us to be checked that the, maybe the the van that, w- that we're looking for can be picked up. On yeah, and just to remind people that the Guardian aren't uh, expecting you to download it, edit it and forward on a file. Uh, if you hand in the device, they will go through it for you and, and, and dig it out, is the information we've had before. Yes. Uh, right, uh, a burglary now being uh, investigated in Burtonport. Yes, this is a burglary which occurred in the Mina Band area of Burtonport last Sunday week, between the su- Sunday the 1st and Monday the 2nd of October at a compound in the area so when locks were broken on a gate to gain access to the compound and locks were broken of four shipping containers within the compound. Uh, fortunately, no property was stolen at the time. So information, if anybody's information in relation to the matter, to contact the Guardian at Milford 07491 or again the confidential line 1800 treble 6 treble 1. All right, uh, shipping containers uh, targeted again, this time in Newtown Cunningham. Yes, this is a burglary which occurred at the GA Club, Neve Column Kill, on Thursday last, the 5th of October, between 8pm and 10pm. 
So the two shipping containers which were stored on the GA ground for, for holding property were broken into and a lawnmower, uh, trimmer and a leaf blower were stolen from the property, Greg. Uh, the GA club was adjacent to the main Letter Kenny Derry Road, the N13, very busy road. So for appealing for information to anybody who may have seen anything suspicious at the time, to contact the Gardaí Letter Kenny 074 916 or again the confidential line. So that's last Thursday evening, the 5th of October, between 8 p.m. and 10 p.m. Is it possible <coughs> that uh, these criminals are, are, see these uh, shipping containers uh, as, as soft targets that normally maybe might have expensive items in them, maybe just to double-check security on them? I wonder. Yes, that would be good advice. Again, in some instances, I know the containers aren't locked, but the advice is to... If you have a property, you know, and you're using containers to store property, make sure it's adequately locked, maybe with some lighting and, if possible, a, an alarm, if possible, or even a camera. So that's the advice to be given. Yeah, indeed. Uh, now, a burglary, uh, a recent burglary in Letterkenny. Yes, this is a burglary which occurred uh, between 5pm last Saturday night and 2am on the Sunday morning. So that's between 5pm Saturday the 7th of October and 2am Sunday the 8th of October. So the occupier, this has happened in the Manor View Park area, Greg of Lerkenny. The occupier of the house had been on a night out and when the person were told they noticed a substantial quantity of cash and debit cards had been stolen from the property. Uh, entry to the house had been gained through an open uh, back window. So again, we're appealing for information. Anybody in the area at the time who may have seen anything suspicious, people or any vehicles, to contact the Gardaí at Lerkenny 07491671100 or again, the confidential line, one 800 treble one OK, next to Peter's one we don't hear an awful lot of, uh, thankfully. This is uh, a robbery. This occurred in Bunkrana. Yes, this occurred last Thursday night, Friday morning, the 8th of October, Greg, at approximately 6.25am. So a male victim was assaulted by two other males in the vicinity of Church Street and Cahirodori Cahir Avenue in the vicinity of the Lake of Shadows Hotel. So he was assaulted on a number of occasions and actually followed over towards Swan Park by the, the offenders. And he had been badly assaulted and a number of personal items stolen from him. Jewellery, uh, his ring and a watch. So again, a quite a vicious, unprovoked assault which is investigated by the Gardaí Munkrana. And the appeal is to contact Gardaí Munkrana 07493 20540 or the Garda Confidential Line 1800 666 Again, anybody who may have been in the area at the time May not have witnessed the stalk, the, the attack, but may have seen uh, males in the area and we're asking them to come forward, please. OK, and, and Guardian Bunkrana also investigating a theft from a vehicle. Yes, this is a theft from a car which occurred in the Ardraven Heights of Bunkrana last Saturday morning, so Friday night, Saturday morning, the 7th of October, between 3.30am and 4.30am. So a handbag containing some cash was removed from the car and the handbag was actually located nearby in a ditch. Uh, inquiries by the Gardaí in the area revealed that attempts were also made to break into a number of cars in the area at the night. So again, the appeal for information last Friday night, Saturday morning, between 3.30am and 4.30am. We have some CCTV showing a number of young males in the area at the time. So the information, if anybody has information or dash cam, to make it available to Gardaí of Uncrana, 07493 20540, or again the confidential line, one 800 one. All right, and a, a horrible incident in Letterkenny, which I hope we don't see any more of, uh, and, and you know has real potential for uh, real serious injury. Um, this happened at Doctor McGinley Road, uh, Union. Yes, last uh, Sunday night, the first of October, between nine p.m. and nine thirty p.m. Greg, unfortunately, a firework was placed in the letter box of a house, and the front door of the house went on fire. Uh, fortunately, the occupier of the house was at home at the time. Um, got a, sm a smell of fire and was able to extinguish, extinguish the fire. However, it, there was extensive damage to the door and the house was filled with smoke. And again, I would hate to think what would happen to property if the occupier had not been present. Or a toddler. Or a toddler, you know, yes. A, a, a toddler, you know, our young boy runs around the place, plays in the hall. I mean, it's just unbelievable. Any information to the Letterkenny Guardian 9167100 or that confidential line uh, which 1 uh, yeah. is there for you as well. I know uh, Sergeant Wallace. But important to reiterate, I think, yeah. uh, Unan, uh, fireworks, it's a it's a heavy punishment for them. Could you go through that for us? Yeah, I can. Yeah, just to be a bit aware, uh, we have more reports of fireworks this year than we had in other years. I don't know the reason why. Maybe coming out of COVID. With people more access to fireworks. I don't know, Greg, but again, 
I, I'd ask people to be wary, you know, when your children are coming home <coughs> in the evening, if they go to their bedroom straight away, maybe suspicious of hiding something. It may be a firework. They may not know the consequences of what damage a firework can cause. And the penalties are quite severe. It's been something that's been treated quite seriously. So, you know, if you're igniting an illegal firework, uh, the penalty is up to €10,000 and a maximum imprisonment of five years. Throwing our, an ignited firework at a person or property, which would be the crime in this case where we're making the appeal. So €10,000 and again up to five years imprisonment. And again, possession of illegal fireworks with intent to sell them or supply them to other people, again, the same penalties, €10,000 and or five years imprisonment. So again, quite severe penalties, something which we've taken quite serious. And we're asking people to be mindful and be aware of the fireworks and that, that they are illegal and most of all the damage they can cause to people, to property and indeed to pets. Mm. So we're asking people... So when be, you say there's more of them about, uh, are, are you hearing more reports of them being lit? Or yes, we're having more reports of fires being, being ignited being ignited around the town yeah. at the minute, Greg, I have to say yes, and it's quite worrying. Yeah, and that's uh, quite severe penalties there. That maybe the people, and not saying it's always young people, but maybe uh, they do not uh, know the serious consequences uh, for uh, handling them. Yes. Right, OK, another <laughs> big topic that comes up time and time again on this programme and around this item is the uh, matter of e-scooters and e-bikes. The bike's harder maybe to determine from regular push bikes, but we see an awful lot of e-scooters about, mostly on the footpath, uh, people seemingly commuting from college or, or, or work. Um, so what's the story with them and legislation? I don't know why I got stuck with this one, but uh, yeah. So they have been signed it's into legislation it's under it's the Road Traffic and Roads Act 2023. Okay, It introduces a new class of vehicle called Personal Powered Transporters. PPT, PPTs. Okay, so this legislation clears the way for rules on the use of e-scooters on public roads, signed into law. So the new law is aimed at modern Ireland, modernising Ireland's regulatory system for road traffic, also clarifies the legal position on e-bikes and e-scooters. So the legislation classifies e-scooters as personal powered transporters. And these regulations will specify the appropriate power, speed and weight, values along with other technical and usage requirements for e-scooters. Regulations have been drafted, Greg, and they're currently with the European Commission for review. So, and when they come into review, they will be legislated. And I'm told by the uh, Roads Policing Unit in Dublin Castle that it's early next year. And I'm also told by the Department of Transport that e-scooters will remain illegal on public roads until the regulations are in place. And when the regulations are in place, the, it'll deal with registration and leasing of scooters and e-scooters will only be permitted on public roads and not footpaths. Again, the legislation will also put e-bikes on a legal footing. So under the le legislation which is proposed, e-bikes with a maximum power output of 250 wattage and a motor cut-off speed at 25 kilometres per hour will be treated as bicycles under Irish law. So they will not have to be licensed, licensed and taxed, yeah, insured, yeah. Or whatever the regulations will be. And, and I'm told, and I haven't told that if you go to buy an e-bike at a, a, a bicycle shop at the minute, they're the only ones that they'd be selling because they'd be telling people, if I sell you one of a higher power next year, you will have to license, tax mm -hmm. it, insure, whatever. Mm -hmm. So just be careful. I'm told you can buy the, the higher powered ones online. So just be careful if you go to buy an e-bike that you, that you may have to license it, insure it and whatever next year. So those e-bikes above these limits and those that can operate without pedalling will now be classified as e-mopeds. And again, they'll be regularised under this uh, Road Traffic and Roads Act 2003. And they will be seen as motorised vehicles that will require a licence, registration, tax and insurance to be used on Irish roads. So it is added that the owners have make any changes yet and continue to legally use their e-bikes or e-mopeds like a pedal cycle until the, the regulations are enforced. And the e-moped is if your maximum power output is over 250 watts and you can exceed 25 kilometres yes. per hour. Yes, that's what's proposed in the regulations. Gone to the European Commission, you know, it may be amended or whatever, but that's the proposal at the minute. So, yeah, I know you had to do your research and you dug deep on this, right? But at the moment, the, we see the scooters on the footpaths. Yes. Is that... Well, scooters at the minute can be treated as mechanically propelled vehicles and although they cannot be licensed, insured, I mean, I feel sorry for people who has one, but they, 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 we are told that they are illegal to be used on the roads 
which includes footpaths at the minute. OK, and uh, the new laws as well. Um, it'll Gardy obviously, will have to pick up the slack on this one and um, it'll give powers of seizure? Yes, powers of seizure, the demand, name, address, all the usual stuff that you'll see on the Road Traffic Acts. And it all, will also deal with the uh, powers to seize and dispose of scramblers and other vehicles such as quad bikes that we can often see being used dangerously on our roads. All right, OK. Cybercrime. Yes, cybercrime. That's you like cybercrime. We always you're always promoting it. We here. have to well promoting how to avoid being the yeah. So of the crime. European Cyber Security Month was officially launched on um, the first of October, and the team is I like this one. Think before you click. Mm -hmm. This focuses on the joint cyber risk of phishing and ransomware attacks, which can target anyone, as you know, in any business. So the campaign, coordinated by the National Cybercrime Bureau, will see events around the country which focus on cyber risks and online safety to counter the continuing growth in cyber attacks. So again, public information graphics will be posted to the Garda social media accounts and the Garda website on the different teams and videos. Uh, different teams and videos will be released on the central risks of phishing and ransomware attacks. Uh, information on the Cybercrime Security Month can be found on uh, cybercrimemonth.eu forward slash. So if you type cybercrimemonth.eu into Google, you will get the appropriate information. So this week's team, Greg, is on online safety and I just had a quick look at it last night. And again, the best advice for anybody at home or at business is to stay alert and keep your antiviruses up to date. And again, same, if it looks too good to be true, mm. it is good to be true. Seek advice from somebody, contact your local station, report any suspicious activity and only use known or trusted networks to connect. So if you're out ordering stuff, Maybe do it at home. Don't click and links. Things. And, and you know, no harm to you, but you strike me as uh, you strike me as a man that perhaps has to rely uh, on people around you to reboot your phone and check things. No, I'm not too bad. Like that. <laughs> I have three. I have, I have three. I have three high tech daughters at home, so they, they keep me. That's up That's what I was really. thinking. Yeah, yeah, they keep you up today. So Sorry. this is one. This is one that that we're all victims of. Keep your personal and your work data separate. And change your passwords regularly. We are so we, people yes. are so reluctant to do that. Yes. And again, to tell us they should have different passwords for different accounts. So mm -hmm. one password for your Amazon account, another password for your whatever account you're buying. Yep. So if you, online. in other words, if you're hacked on Amazon, you're, it doesn't mean they have access to every other, even your bank or wherever it might be. So that's the logic. So if you're, they're hacked on, on Amazon, they have your password. Whatever, they'll know that. There's a good chance you're using the same password yeah. for every for every sure. online account that because you have. Because it's human nature. Yes. It's and human it's a very nature. difficult thing to do. And again, the advice is don't store passwords on your phone. No. And we're all guilty of it yeah. and we go into... Particularly account. iPhone users seem to put all of their private information in their notes. Yes. I don't, and I again, don't if you lose your phone and, and your phone can be hacked, there. everything is there. Yeah. So, And I think the advice that I was given was, you find it hard to believe, keep a notebook in a secure place at yeah. home which are different passwords. It's time consuming, but if you want to be secure 24 7, this is what we've got to do. Radio drop in clinics uh, across the Bunkrana district. Yes, uh, Gardy and McCranner are having a number of drop in clinics actually today, the 10th, 11 to 12, Malinhead Community Centre. You're not too late yet. Uh, 2 pm to 3 pm, Moville Family Resource Centre. Uh, 6 pm to 7 pm, Greencastle Community Centre. So there'll be a member available to sign documents and forms, passports, stamped, etc. Uh, advice and guidance again no appointment is necessary and maybe even a cup of tea so it's ide ideal for people maybe, for people maybe who cannot travel you know the smaller stations might not be open at even time if you cannot travel to Munkrana to get your form signed or your passport signed call in to these dropping clinics yep. Malinhead today between 11 and 12 uh, 2 to 3 p.m. Mavill Family Resource Centre 6 to 7 p.m. Greencastle Community Centre now high vis questions coming in uh, quite a bit uh, Unan against that time of the year I think some of it is that people go out for a walk and get caught out by the, the dusk yes exactly knowingly sort of saying yeah. stuff that, you know and you get home from work at 5 or 6 o'clock yeah. you know you have some, maybe a quick bite to eat and you say I'll go for a walk yeah. nice and bright and then yeah. all of a sudden you're feeling fit, you extend your walk, but you get caught. Yeah, exactly. Okay, you have the to advice, walk back. Yeah. High vis vests. And I, my advice is even during the day, mm -hmm. high vis vest. If you come driving a, a car even during the day and you see people walking, you'll the people with the high vis vest will strike your eye quicker mm. than those without it. So the yeah. advice is we have some in the station, we're dependent on the RSA for them, but they can be bought in, in local shops and things like that. Exactly, and it should be an open door with pushing because if, if you, and this is, I'm not interested in the slightest in pitching any group of road users against another, but if you're on a motorbike, you have your helmet on. If you're in a car, exactly. you have your uh, seatbelt on. on. You have your, your lights, lights on. on. Exactly. So if you're out walking, whether it's daytime or nighttime, mm -hmm. if you throw on that high-vis vest and get into the habit of doing that, it 
it's hard to it would be hard to sort of um evaluate how it reduces it the does. risk of it harm does. but it does. it does reduce the risk of harm it reduces the harm and it reduces the speed of road users who come along and see people in high vis yeah. so the, the, the mindful people will slow down when they meet people walking on the yeah. road or it should path. just be a given like other areas of road safety for other road well, users you can say it should be part of the rules of the road perhaps it should yeah I didn't want to go that far but since you said it uh, Union listen thanks very much just indeed. a quick Greg I want to okay. Uh, congratulate yourself and Caroline and all the team on the award. Thank you. Is that That's on behalf of yourself or all, all of Ungarda Shee? All of Ungarda Shee. Drew the, Harris as well? Well, Drew, yes. We've, we've come to an agreement. You're friends again now, isn't it? <laughs> I never followed him, actually. But <laughs> of course you're... But you're <laughs> it's from everybody in the Garda Shee Donegal. Cat, congratulations on your hard work. You're, you've always been there for, for, for appeals and also for things for sharing our things in relation to cybercrime, missing people, everything like that. And I was just at home the last day and my daughter said to me, oh, Daddy, there's your friend Greg. He looks like the next James Bond. Ding, so, diddle, ding, 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 ding. <laughs> well, she, I think she said, he looks like the next James Bond or he thinks he's the next James Bond. Probably the second one. <laughs> <laughs> and she says, I'm not sure what where he was wearing his dicky bow, but... Okay, well, this is, it's, it's, it's been the talk of the town, the dicky bow. Hey, I'll lend it to you. Congratulations you to, get... to yourself and Caroline. Thanks everybody so well much, Eunan. Really, really do appreciate it. And uh, it's contributions from the likes of yourself and your colleagues and others as well, which are, are all part of it. Thank you very okay, much indeed. Talk to you Eunan. soon, Greg. Thank you. We'll be back with Community Guard information uh, next uh, Tuesday, just after the 10 o'clock news. And you'll be able to watch it back on our Facebook page and on God of Shia, uh, Shia Connor Facebook page a little later on today. The Community Garda Information Slot is brought to you by Sheridan Security Systems. Protecting what you value most. Call today and get your zero wire alarm system from €299. Euro. Sheridan Security, 912625. Watch the show live now on YouTube, Facebook and at highlandradio.com. The 9 Till Noon Show is brought to you by Letterkenny Credit Union. Seasonal loans now available for Christmas. Apply online or via our app today and get your loan transferred directly to your current account. With a high digital online skills course, you'll feel a real difference. I can listen to all the music I like. The bus app that's coming out, and it's brilliant. Anything you want to know, it's at your fingertips. They're small things, but they mean something. Learn essential online skills with simple, accessible lessons at highdigital.ie or free phone 1800 20 30 30. Brought to you by Vodafone Ireland Foundation and Alone. Vodafone, together we can. Have you heard about the McElhenney's M Card? Now available exclusively in store. Sign up today to start earning and redeem once you hit 500 points. Register in store at our M Card station on the first floor or at any tell point. The M Card, the new way to save at McElhenney's. Hurry, the Furniture Show NI ends this weekend. Your last chance to save with massive discounts from leading brands in furniture and interiors, from sofas, beds, flooring and design. CFC have it all reduced in their biggest sale. Don't miss the Furniture Show NI exclusively at CFC Interiors Camp C Derry. From the morning routines to cosy family moments, Grant has been bringing comfort to homes for over 45 years. With our biofuel compatible condensing boilers, heat pumps and underfloor heating, you can trust Grant to heat your home now and into the future. Think heating, think Grant. Visit grant.ie. The Shimmers Grand Festival, a weekend of the best in traditional music, singing and dance in Clonmany from the 13th to the 15th of October. Concerts featuring Thomas Drain, Paula and Melanie Hewton and the amazing Frankie Gavin. Tickets on Eventbrite or pay at the door. Check out full programme on Facebook or log on to shimmersgrantweekend.com. Clonmany, 13th to the 15th of October is the place to be. Every Volvo made goes through a rigorous quality check process before it leaves the factory. Every pre-owned Volvo available through our Volvo Select program goes through that same process again with all the quality, power and guarantee you expect from Volvo. Own a pre-owned all-electric Volvo C40 or XC40 Recharge with a minimum 12-month unlimited mileage warranty and Volvo assistance as standard. Get used cars recharged at McGinley Motors. Search Volvo Select or visit volvocost.ie. Terms and conditions apply. Okay, so we're going from one arm of the emergency services to another uh, because, uh, did you know, that this is Fire Safety Week. Um, we have uh, Eddie Moore, Station Officer at Letterkenny Fire Station with us. Eddie, good morning to you. 
Great, thank you for joining us. And Michael Pertle, sub officer at Letterkenny uh, Fire Station. Good morning to you, Michael. Morning, Greg. So, what is the the main points that we want to get across in this uh, piece, Michael? Yeah. So, I guess um, this week is fire safety, and the theme this year is uh, we're safer together. So, the the I guess the theme or the theory behind that is. Um, we have vulnerable people in the community. We have those living on their own, those that may not be aware of fire safety. And what we've seen during the COVID times was we can be a fantastic community. We can look after everyone around us. And we're asking for that to continue this year with working and being safer together. So go up to that older person in the community in the community that you know. Um, just check, do they have a smoke alarm? Is it working? Um, is their roots clear? You know, um, and talking to them, talking to your or neighbour, even if they're not old or not isolated, talking to your own family and just getting that conversation going about fire safety. Because we know, un- unfortunately, uh, if you um, are over 65, 65 or older, you are more likely to die in a house fire. Yeah, so uh, I think it's around 52% of fires I was looking at the stats there this morning from 2010 to 2020 and it was uh, over 52% of people that died in house fires were over 65 and that's the kind of people that uh, we want you to go out uh, and to uh, provide this kind of message to them. It was a, there was a, I can't remember whether it was a COVID reaction or if it was part of a transition year study or whatever but there was a young group of it was a group of young people and their project was to uh, go into older people's houses and check their fire alarms and all that kind of stuff. I thought it was brilliant yeah. um, and, and it would be great if it would uh, catch on. So uh, I mean we have stop and these things work too Eddie because it, it gives us an opportunity to talk about and remind ourselves of uh, some of the measures that we need to take and Michael's covered them but stop obviously number one smoke alarm I mean it's it is invaluable it's a lifesaver it's a proof it's proven there's no debate a working fire alarm is really effective so so we're talking about smoke alarms there. what we're talking about there is our, our early detection so if a fire does occur we want to be alerted as quickly as we possibly can all right so that's our smoke alarm our smoke alarm works 24 7 for us so it's constantly detecting to see if there's a fire so you take when we're most vulnerable we're lying on our beds we're sleeping a fire occurs wherever it may occur in the house. We need something to alert us, to wake us up that there is a fire. That is our smoke alarm. So we need to make sure it's there. The second thing, and we're talking about our STOP there, so our STOP, so uh, a STOP fire essentially, and, and the STOP acronym is uh, S, as you say, for smoke alarms, and T, and it's for testing, and it's testing weekly. So our, all our smoke alarms should be tested weekly. Um, just on, back, back to your smoke alarms, we should have at least one smoke alarm per level of our house, Mm -hmm. at least one. And in terms of where they should be, you know, like, uh, is it it sort of head height when you're lying in bed? A lot of people have them up at the ceiling. Uh, Is there a recommended place we should have them located? So so our smoke alarm should be on our ceiling, ideally. Because smoke is going to rise, Mm -hmm. you know, so so that's where it's going to come. So it'll go up and then comes down, really, doesn't it? So It'll go up and then it'll just keep on filling up. So the room will keep on filling with smoke. So that's why we want our our smoke alarm at at our highest point as possible in that room, all right? Does it annoy you? when people let me call them fire alarms I would say it does because it's really the smokes that early detection isn't it it's, 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 look, it's the same as the same thing really you know it doesn't doesn't bother us as, as long as we have one and it's working you know that, that's, that's that's our message, message essentially testing um, them is the T testing them then is the T yeah so so we have test it Tuesday as, as what, I, what I was taught Michael was taught whenever he joined something different he was taught thumbs up Monday we don't care when you test them, as, as long as they're tested weekly, you know. Um, and, and that is what the tea is for. So again, Mike was talking about that safer together. So if we do have a, a more vulnerable person near us that we can check in on, check, obviously, first, do they have a smoke alarm? And then we need to check, is it working? So can we test it for them? Mm. And if not, then uh, then we can, we can make arrangements then for that as well. Then. All right, OK. And we'll come back to OMP. But, Michael, I, I uh, was looking at a, a, a smoke alarm and noticed there was an expiry date or a best before date on it. I'm not sure if that's a, uh, a smoke alarm. I'm not sure if that's across all of them. But, you know, the, there can be an expiry date on some of them. Is that correct? Yeah, all, all smoke alarms will have an expiry date and they should be replaced <laughs> okay. on that expiry date. You can get ones now that have a, a 10-year lifespan and they have a sealed battery because, I mean... What we tended to do was, once that alarm was going off, once we were burning our bacon on the cooker, the alarm was going off, we would take the battery out. So true. And we certainly wouldn't replace it again. And that's a non-working smoke alarm then. But now they come sealed, they come 10 year, but yes, they do have uh, experience. And I would say there's an awful lot of people listening at home, or else I'm an outlier, 
who may be around Christmas time went looking for one of those square batteries and it came out of the smoke alarm and did it ever go back in as it yeah. should have you know but things- well, there is a, there is options I guess when we talk about a smoke alarm you can get a heat alarm as well so mm. in areas uh, in or around the cooker you can put a heat alarm in which detects, detects heat rather than smoke so it won't go off uh, when you burn mm. that bacon um, Is that we- useful too for likes of dishwashers and stuff if you have a heat alarm I wonder Yeah well the heat alarm it's what we find is it's incorrect placement of the alarm so people put alarms uh, like above a cooker that's not a correct place right, to okay. be you know so putting them in the right places um, uh, tends to mean that they don't get taken out then or they don't get the battery just mm. taken out so if they're put in the right place um, then uh, they, they, they get used much better I was in a house um, Eddie not so long ago and I, um, I was plugging something in anyway and it was an older house and I, I, it sort of struck me that it was almost the perfect storm because it was an older house there wasn't as much things back in the day to plug in right so it was a single socket uh, a wiring to an older spec but obviously even though you might live in an older house you've still got all the gear and you have an extension lead with four or five things plugged into this single socket. Uh, is, is that a potential obvious danger that you could be overloading that socket that you maybe need to sort of say, is that really a, a danger if I leave that on all the time? So, so yeah, absolutely. And you, you mentioned there, over- overloading the socket. So, you know, what we're talking about there is an adapter, essentially. So it's, 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 it's one plug going into one socket. But then off that socket, then there's four or five different other plug points that are being plugged into. And that's what we're talking about there, overloading sockets. So, I suppose if we are going to use anything at all like that, we need to be using certified ones, proper ones, so they should have the CE mark on it okay. at, at a minimum um, if, if we can't get around it. But again, like that, we shouldn't be using it for prolonged periods of time. So if we can, we need to be switching it off when we're not using them, etc. So again, we use, we use the, the term unattended, you know, so we try, try not to use anything unattended or leave anything unattended, sorry, um, um, for, for, for periods of time that may, that may, that may cause a fire, you know. And, and again, and, and I know uh, one of the themes about this is to sort of, you know, the, the community element of it, and we'll come back to that, but just generally to go over it. Uh, plan your escape route. The uh, I can't remember when it was. Uh, back in the day, uh, the young fella, Aaron, landed home from school with the stickers. Obviously, some of you guys had been yeah. in the school. And uh, the stickers are still stuck to the... <laughs> to the, good, good, to, good, You know yes. what I mean? Yeah, They're still yeah. stuck to the glasses and all yeah. that kind of stuff, and it was a bit annoying at the time. But you know what? It got us talking about... Yeah, if I were incapacitated, how would the kids get out? Yeah. Not kid, you know, yeah. you know yeah. what I mean? And all that type of stuff. It was a simple thing, but it yeah. really, really worked because we started talking about, well, if you're in that end of the house, there's that double door and, and all this sort of stuff. So more generally, this is the P, plan your escape route. You might think, and you may never, and God forbid, you ever have to use it. But if you've sort of thought about it, it's etched in your mind then when it comes to a situation that you might need it. Yeah. yeah. Well, back to that, sorry, back to that uh, with the kids and uh, we go out <laughs> and we talk to kids and I talk to parents all the time and they tell me that, oh, their kid came back and they talked about fire safety. Children are fantastic mm. taking that message home and they'll talk to an adult. We'll, we'll have a lot of adults listening to this uh, today and they'll go, I must go home now and check my smoke alarm and they'll forget about it and it won't be done. So what one of the things we ask is to try and make a point of going home today and thinking about fire safety, thinking about that evacuation route. And that evacuation route is, what do we do in the event of a fire? So if I'm upstairs at three o'clock in the morning and that smoke alarm goes off, what do we do? So we have a plan A, our normal route out of the building is to go out this door. And if we can't go out that door, we'll have a plan B. So if that's blocked because there's a fire, we'll go out a different route. It's thinking about your escape routes and obviously keeping them clear. That's so important that we always keep them clear. Them stickers are fantastic because they identify the two escape routes and mm-hmm. that's ingrained on your brain. That's our escape routes that we normally go to. Um, it's keeping keys near windows you'll see a lot of windows can can be locked. 100%, so then PVC yeah. windows, if that key's not in there and you're trying to get out that window in the middle of the night, then you're going to have a... I know a where all my difficult. keys are. They're in a drawer in the kitchen. Yeah. yeah. And we also and find... And a few of them are locked there. You know, yeah. maybe people have the... The top one's open for, for to let some air through, but yeah. that escape route, that wide yeah. window... Is it, well, now I have a couple of them open, but you know yeah. what I mean. It's it's yeah. what you're saying is true in a lot of houses. It's the same with PVC doors as well. So our escape routes or uh, no, our door to go into the house can have uh, a lockable uh, key. Sometimes we take that out, uh, but if you're going down uh, in the middle of the night and it's dark, full of smoke, and you're panicking, and you're thinking, where did I put that key? Mm-hmm. You know, an alternative is uh, how do we get out then? A lot of people we have found who have died in house fires were found down at the door. Wow. So they got as far as the door, 
but they just didn't get to that last part. Unbelievable. So what we say to you is we want you to uh, detect that fire early, uh, evacuate as quickly as possible, then call us out and we'll come, we'll put that fire out, but we're delighted to see you stand outside that house. Get out, stay out and get the fire, get out, isn't that what used to say? That's exactly it, yeah, exactly it. And just just on on the uh, escape route there, you know, it's it's fine, you know, getting out, you know, if we have our our family or our children, we also need to identify a point where we're going to meet yeah. in the event of a fire. So, mm-hmm. so we're, you know, there are probably plenty of your listeners now listening now at work today, and they'll have assembly points at their work. That's exactly what we need at home to as well. Somewhere for the whole family to meet. Mm. There's nothing worse than if, if there is a fire in the house and everybody gets out. Where's Greg? Where's Greg? Where's Greg? Where's Greg? Where's Greg? Yeah. Yeah. Next yeah. thing you know, somebody decided to make that, that, that bad decision and to go in and look for Greg. And that's the last thing we want. So we, mm. so we want to get everybody out together and at least them when the fire service arrives, we can take a look around and say, yeah, everybody's here. Everybody's accounted mm. for it. Or in the case, look, Greg's not out. Greg's. He was up in his bedroom. That's where he is. Yep. And again, we can make the decision then to, to go in. And get, is there any and right or wrong in leaving keys in the doors? Not for a security perspective, because in a way I think they can do, they can work to stop people fiddling with the lock from externally. But is there any risk of them melting or malfunctioning if they're less left in the lock? The You're going to be well out. You're going to be out of the house there. well, exactly. well before that. Okay. Yeah. Um, so we've been talking about, uh, we started off, uh, well, we, we then we went on to talk about how Important it was our children coming home to us and 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 sort of getting that conversation going, getting the stickers going, and that's where we started to make sure that if there are older people around us, not just family but neighbours who maybe don't have someone that calls or someone who may call and hasn't talked about this, to uh, bind together as a community and make sure we have the stop in place for for everyone and remind everyone how important it is. Uh, Michael, do you want to just recap on that? Yeah, so again, it's important that, again, the theme for this is we're safer together. We're safer that everyone is out there and talking about fire safety. Um, Over 40% of those that died uh, in the house fires between 2010 and 2020 didn't have a a a working smoke alarm. Didn't have a Say that one more time. So uh, around 40% of those that died in right. house fires didn't have right, a working okay. smoke alarm. Uh, and then over half of those were aged 65 and above. Um, so there is uh, a lot of vulnerable people in our community, those that are older, those that live alone, those that um, maybe m- m- mobility issues and so on, and they probably don't have a and smoke alarm. And anyone not listening to this because it doesn't matter what age you are. If you're not listening to this, you haven't got the reminder and, you know, so spread yeah. the word. Spread the, spread the word. word. Talk Absolutely. to everyone in your family. So let's say even have conversations when you think you're not at risk, talk to everyone at home. You know, just say, is that smoke alarm working? Is it out of date? Maybe we should replace it. They're not expensive anymore. They're easy to put up. Um, and for those that are vulnerable, I mean, contact the fire service. Uh, they could provide a smoke alarm for you and we'll yeah. ensure... Um, that it gets installed in those vulnerable people for them. Yeah, okay. And, and just generally, suppose, uh, you know, phone chargers, um, things like that there, just to, to, to make sure that we don't let our guard down, because you know there could be an incident and then there's a big rush of conversation, you know, about overloaded sockets or, or phone chargers on the pillows and, and then everyone's all concerned about it for a while and then we return to our bad habits again. Yeah, yeah. So, so absolutely. Again, when you're talking about phone chargers, again, there was a there was a a raise, you know, and and fires happening because of phone chargers, particularly because of what you were saying there, phones being left charging on beds, soft materials, stuff that could easily go on fire. So, if we are charging a phone, it should be charged on a on a hard surface, so the legs of a table, something that, that isn't going to easily ignite, you know. So, it's, again, it's just just being aware of these things and, and taking care. And again, we shouldn't be using uh, chargers that aren't 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 from the manufacturer, essentially. Yeah, yeah, uh, exactly. You know, so. Yeah, exactly. Okay, uh, lads. Anything else you want to add? Uh, we've covered pretty much everything there. Uh, uh, no, like I say, just uh, pass on this information. We are safer together. If there's any community groups out there in the county that want us to come out, the fire service throughout Donegal, contact the Donegal Fire uh, Headquarters in Letterkenny and we'll try and arrange to get out and have a, a talk about fire safety this week. All right, OK. Thank you very much indeed. Clean your chimneys too, actually. A lot of people starting to light fires for the first time. That's it. Absolutely. Coming yeah. into winter, uh, you need to get your chimney <coughs> clean too if you can. All right. Michael Pertle, who is the sub-officer at Nettie Fire Station. Eddie Moore, too, station officer. Both of you, thank you very, very much indeed. We'll be back with more shortly. The 9 Till Noon Show is brought to you by Letterkenny Credit Union. Offering low-rate car loans with fast approval. Apply online at letterkennycu.ie or in office today. Um, hi, I'm at the Garda station, but it's nothing. I told this girl I was seeing for a while that I'd put shots of her up online. Shots she sent me, so they're mine, really. I only said I'd do it, but the guards are saying that's a crime now. It's not my fault, Mum. I didn't do anything. I, I only said I would. Threatening to share intimate images is a crime with serious consequences. 
Contact your local Garda station if you need to report it. Brought to you by the Government of Ireland. Homeowners, it's time to unlock incredible savings on your energy bills. Efficient Renewables is here to reduce your energy consumption, say goodbye to skyrocketing costs and hello to renewable energy solutions. With no VAT on solar panels and the generous grants for both solar panels and heat pumps, see these innovative systems in action in our state-of-the-art showroom in Newton Cunningham today. Contact Efficient Renewables on 074 97 08320. More and more people are moving to rural Ireland, but we're not here in Donegal for a slower pace of life. We're here because rural Ireland is alive. Brimming with ideas and energy. The only thing holding us back is slow broadband. It's cut. Pure glacial. So why wait? Imagine broadband speed gives us the freedom to connect without compromises. Imagine broadband is connecting homes and businesses in your community right now. For better service and faster broadband faster, switch to imagine.ie. Imagine. Faster broadband, faster. Subject to location and available. If you know the beauty and skincare product that suits you best, you'll find them at McGee's Chemist Letter Kenny. From moisturizers, cleansers, and toners to day creams and night creams, McGee's have the top brands you know and love, like Lancome, Clarins, and La Roche Posay. Also, Elizabeth Arden, Vichy, Nukes, and many more. All at McGee's Chemist Main Street Letter Kenny and online at McGee's.ie. For the best, cost less. Ireland Radio weather updates with Ireland West Airport, where you can now fly daily to London Heathrow with Aer Lingus and connect via Heathrow to over 80 destinations worldwide, including Boston, New York and more. OK, weather forecast for today. Oh, where is it? I had the weather up there and it disappeared on me. I'm going to get good at this soon, I swear. All right, weather forecast for today. Outbreaks of rain and drizzle this morning. More persistent rain will develop in the northwest towards the evening. Tracking southeastwards, if you don't mind. Warm and humid with highest temperatures of 17 or 18 degrees. Becoming breezier with moderate to fresh and gusty southwest winds. Now, just time for a brief on with uh, Anne Conaghan from the Killybegs Community Council. Good morning to you, the chair of it indeed. Hi, Anne. Hi, Greg. How are you doing? Good, good morning. Good, good to have you on the show. Right, you're being uh, you're urging the public to let the council know if uh, they get any obnoxious smells in Killybegs. What's this off the back of? Um, this has been going on now for a number of years, potentially probably about even four or five years, where there has been an extremely noxious, noxious and obnoxious smell mm. happening um, over the show road in Killybegs. From kind of anyone who knows Killybegs, the Black Rock Pier over towards Mooney Boat but then also going up uh, towards the Roshin Road, up the New Road. Um, extremely bad. Um, it's a very popular area for people who walk, uh, both locally uh, from our own community, but also obviously tourists. And it's the direct route that um, people would take when they're walking from the cruise ships over to the mm. town. Um, and is it, a case, Anne, that, is, is it a case, Anne, that everyone might be talking about it and noticing it because it's not being formally lodged with the council, maybe uh, it's not getting the attention it needs? Exactly. Yes, that's exactly that. The Community Council have been in contact with a number of the agencies, uh, EPA, Ishka Aaron, Donegal, and they come back to Donegal Council, all of them seem to, um, over the years, with no success, mm. um, everybody seems to, it's somebody else's problem, but then nobody seems to be fit to identify the problem or do anything about it. And yes, locally, we all talk about it, um, but it, it has been said that really we need to be logging these complaints with the Donegal County Council. It is quite easy. You uh, ring their main line and ask for the Environment Department and log the complaint there. Also online, it's very easy to do. Um, so the more complaints that we can get logged, obviously we're raising the uh, attention of the county council and hopefully we'll get something done. Yeah, it's so this, important, this Anne, because uh, especially when people get petitions together, it's effectively one complaint uh, and all the effort goes yes. into it, but it's one complaint. You uh, are saying, look, if this is something that bothers you, contact 91 make uh, an envi- ask to make an environmental complaint or go on to donegalcoco.ie and, and probably empowering the council as well uh, because uh, they can maybe start putting pressure on uh, you know whomever is responsible okay Anne listen thank you very much uh, for that we do appreciate it and hopefully you get a good response to that that's Anne Conaghan there who is the chairperson of the Killybegs Community Council
The 9 Till Noon Show is brought to you by Letterkenny Credit Union with monster loans available up to €60,000 for all occasions. Visit letterkennycu.ie. Ready for winter? It could be a busy one, so it's best you're prepared. Help protect yourself and the people around you by getting your winter flu and COVID-19 vaccinations at the same appointment. Our trusted, experienced team are on hand to help at Boots Pharmacies across Ireland. Book in-store or online at boots.ie forward slash flu. With you for making the most of this winter. Boots, with you for life. Eligibility criteria apply. Charges may apply subject to availability. Do you rely on kerosene to heat your business? You could be eligible for one-off payment through the government's new business user support scheme for kerosene. This scheme is open from now until the 31st of October. Find out more on enterprise.gov.ie. An initiative of the Government of Ireland. Toast your Christmas party this year at Century Complex with delicious food, a superb atmosphere and excellent service. We have something to suit everyone. Make your night extra special by adding a premium cinema experience. To book, call 074 912 or visit centurycinemas.ie for more information on Century Complex this Christmas. Some cars pass by unnoticed and others, others catch your eye. There's something about them, something different. Something that just speaks for itself. The Opel Astra, a new generation Astra. A car that just has to be experienced on every level. Named Continental Tires Irish Compact Car of the Year 2023. The Opel Astra speaks for itself. Test drive the Opel Astra at Manor Motors Opel. See manormotors.ie for details. Welcome to the Donegal Lost and Found Sounds, brought to you by Specsavers Hearing Experts, who are helping the community rediscover the joy of ordinary sounds. Michelle from Dunlow is delighted to be able to hear the gentle tip-tapping of rain on her kitchen window again, while Mark from Carndona loves the birdsong and dulcet woo-hoo of the neighbourhood pigeons that he's rediscovered on his morning walk. Whatever sounds you've lost, Specsavers Hearing Experts could help find them again. Book a free hearing test at your local Spec Savers. With all the stories that matter across the Northwest, it's Greg Hughes on the 9 to Noon Show on Highland Radio. All right, it is 11 o'clock. Let's get a news update now from Donna Marie Doherty. Thanks, Greg. Good morning. 18 families in Letterkenny have received an eviction notice. The homes located in the Ballymacool estate are being sold due to a change in the developer's company that holds the rental agreement. Cahill McFinn, chair of the Ballymacool Residents Association, spoke to Greg Hughes this morning on the Nintel Noon Show. He says there is very little accommodation for available for rent in the area and what is simply is not affordable. We're two hours away from finding out the full extent of this year's budget. A 1.1 billion euro tax package will include cuts to USC and income tax, as well as increased excise duty on a packet of cigarettes. While on the spending side, there will be an increase on the minimum wage, extra supports for small businesses and a cut in childcare fees. Gardaí are investigating a burglary which occurred on Thursday last between 8pm and 10pm at the GAA club in Newton Cunningham. Two shipping containers were accessed and equipment was stolen, during, or including a lawnmower, a trimmer and a leaf blower. Anyone who believes they have information that can assist Gardaí with this investigation is asked to make it available. Cash and debit cards were stolen from a home in Letterkenny over the weekend. Sometime between 5 o'clock on Saturday evening last and 2am on Sunday morning, entry was gained to a home in Manorview Park via an open window at the rear of the home. The occupant who was out for the night returned home to discover a substantial amount of cash had been taken along with two debit cards. Those with information is asked to contact Gardaí. And finally, Gardaí and Milford are appealing for information in relation to a burglary that took place between Sunday the 1st of October and the following Monday in Burton Port. Locks were broken and entry was gained to a compound at Mean Banad. Further locks were then broken in order to enter four shipping containers. Nothing was taken. Those are the latest headlines and next news updates at 12 o'clock. Until then, good morning. Thank you very much, uh, Donna Marie. And of course, you heard Donna Marie mention uh, the budget. We pretty much know everything that's uh, in it at this point. But tomorrow, uh, we will have a uh, review of it and try and find out uh, what it might mean for you. You know, they're all about putting money back in your pocket. Well, we'll uh, hopefully determine if that actually happens. All right. Uh, next item on the way after a short one. 
Only people from the 90s will know what that sound means. I can picture it now. Back when McDonald's started cracking free-range eggs across the entire menu, an internet dial-up was the only way to get online. Those few minutes wait felt super fast, and it was known as the World Wide Web. Ah, the good old days. It's just one of the little changes McDonald's have been constantly making to the way we source and produce our food over the years. Find out more at mcdonalds.ie. McDonald's. Change a little, change a lot. Now, I want to play a very special request, albeit a little late. Uh, my apologies. Uh, but it's a very special request for Kathleen Doherty in Carn Ballet Buffet. Kathleen is celebrating her 93rd birthday today. Granny Doherty, as she's affectionately known, is hale and hearty and will be looking forward to all her visitors today to help her celebrate. Uh, best wishes and love coming in from Siobhan, Tommy and all uh, the family. So a very, very happy birthday, 93rd birthday to Kathleen Doherty in Carn. And uh, I've been asked to mention that the Malin Head to Glengad Road will be closed at... Uh, Urbalria, is it? From uh, 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. on Wednesday the 11th, Thursday the 12th, and Friday the 13th of October. The road will be closed from its junction with the Black Mountain Road to the junction with the Drenna Road. Uh, alternative route is the Black Mountain Road, Tully Road, Drenna Road, Marlin Head to Glengad Road. Donegal County Council are apologising for any inconvenience this uh, closure may uh, cause. Right, OK. We're joined on the programme now by uh, Sinead Smith. Sinead, thank you for uh, taking the call this morning. Oh, you're very welcome. A very happy birthday to Kathleen and Carindona. <laughs> yes, indeed. Right, Sinead, um, you say you've thought long and hard about whether or not you should share this and you decided, feck it, <laughs> nothing to use uh, your words. Uh, but you say, Sinead, it needs to be called out. What's the issue? Um... Well, the, the issue was that we had uh, we run an artist retreat here in Carindona and it's how I earn my living, being an artist, teaching painting and, and providing these um, retreats for, for people. And during the winter here, now coming into the winter, we decided to go on to a couple of booking platforms to try and even things out a bit, you know, because mm -hmm. um, things can get a wee bit slow. So we had our first visitor through um, booking up and they just booked for two people and we have our policy of if you're bringing a pet let us know we have a one pet policy mm -hmm. because you know yourself dogs getting together they're jumping all over each other and rolling around and playing whatever um, that's just dogs but um, they had come over from England by, by a cork They'd gone to Cork first and then come up to us after a long journey. And it was dark on the Friday night. And um, I showed them around the cottage, went back out, and I could see there was a dog in the car. So I always make it a habit of meeting the dog just so we know it's a friendly dog. So we have a child, and I always say, don't go near that dog. It's a wee bit angry or it's a wee bit uh, anxious or mm -hmm. leave, you know, just leave it alone. Or that dog's friendly, you can pet it. Um, and she opened the door and three dogs jumped out. Wow. A large husky and two collies. And I was like, oh, holy God, OK. And the husky legged it up the road. So they had very little control over um, the dog. Um, and alarm bells just were going off in my head. But, you know, I suppose you don't like... I don't like confrontation and I don't like turning people away. It, left, it, you in a, it and left you in a very difficult position, Sinead, because you did, did ask for prior notice and you've got a one uh, dog rule, which I think would cover most. They didn't let you know they had pest, pets. They land with three no. rather big dogs and, and one at least uh, rather lively. You're stood there. What do you do next? I know. And you don't like people not having a bed for the night. Mm. Maybe that's just me being from an issue on. You know, you like to be welcoming. Yeah. Um, and I just went in and said to my husband, just say a wee prayer that we're left in a good position after this, that they're nice people and whatever. Um, but they left very early on the Sunday morning um, because our dog barks at the slightest noise outside and we were woken about half, half seven, eight o'clock, I think. And I, um, well, after we got up, I went and checked in the, the cottage and... They had gone completely. Mm -hmm. and Were they scheduled point, to stay longer, Sinead? 
No, okay. no, they weren't. They were, but we we don't expect people to leave, you know, until about twelve mm. o'clock on a Sunday. You and know, just kind before of you progress the story, it's it's a it's it's a, a particularly nice property that you have. It is. We always, I always have had this dream of providing a wee bit of luxury, especially for creative people. There's an art studio attached to it, you see, so they have access twenty four seven, and beautiful. Like I. I spent a lot of time on the side in the decor myself. Mm. And, you know, there's it's an experience you're offering, isn't it? It's not simply yes. a bed. You're, you're obviously trying to, to give people an experience. And it's often uh, and, and, and very much so uh, appreciated as you've been very busy. So People work hard for their money, yeah, you know, sure, and if I'm going to sure. take it from them, I want to give them something nice. So it's clear <laughs> then they've left, so it's time to go into yeah. the property. What, what, what were you met yeah. with? I was met with dog pee on the floor beside the kitchen sink, um, dog pee on the carpet, big stains, muddy footprints all over the carpet beside the fire and thick with hair, mm. like caked. And because they had three dogs, I had um, been very civil with them, but kind of very, you know, we don't allow dogs in the bedrooms to, to keep the um, integrity of our bedding because we may have... You know, when dogs come, we do a, a good clean after. But guests may have allergies to dogs, so we don't allow them in the bedrooms. And they were like, oh, no, that's reasonable. Mm-hmm. Well, the, do- the dogs had been, they had spread the bed covers, like uh, patchwork quilts and bl- lovely blankets over the beds, and the dogs had been sleeping on the beds. Mm-hmm. One of the rooms was so humid from, obviously, from dog breath because it stank, that I had to get the dehumidifier in, you know, and the, the hairs were just unbelievable. And it sounds and it like the me... dogs had been running around, uh, getting messy, coming in, shaking their, their coats, jumping Everywhere. all over everything, because the walls were spattered. The walls, just... the paintwork. You know, if someone was having a party in there of a night and they spilt red wine all over the floor or on the on the carpet or down the cupboards or on the walls and the radiators... They would clean it up. Mm. Um, but they so just up and left. They just left. At this point, then the bathroom as well even got a touch. So at this point, yeah. then it's a it's a it's a deep clean, and presumably any money you were going to make out of the whole experience is gone now. Yeah, well, I mean, we would have asked two hundred and thirty for the two nights, mm. the Friday and the Saturday, and you know, I spent approximately ten hours cleaning. Now I'm not a cleaner. By trade, so if somebody, if I'd have hired somebody, they may have done it faster. But if I paid myself the minimum wage, eleven thirty an hour, for ten hours, you're taking away a hundred and thirteen mm-hmm. from that, yep. minus the booking fee from the platform, yep. minus the wear and tear, and five loads of washing. Everything had to be washed. The cushion covers and the sofas, the sofas had to be wiped down. They allowed them up there as well. Unbelievable. You know, and we're we try to be environmentally friendly, so your cleaning products are more expensive. So, uh, so you know, what what does this mean for your do do? one dog policy? Then, I mean, you know, it's obvious that you wanted to sort of you recognise the importance of a, of a dog in a, in a family's life or an individual's life, for that matter. But I mean, do you think twice about it now? Well, if I'd had that experience already, it's a learning process for us because we've just been open a year. Mm. And, you know, I have a lovely artist coming from England who's arriving tonight for a full week in tuition and everything, so it's a different kettle of fish, I suppose. But if that had happened, if that ever happens again, I will simply be saying, I'm sorry, you're not our problem. Are you worried now that you you have to worry too now that you're not nose blind um, with having been in there all the time? I'm sure your guest won't notice. It sounds like you've uh, went to town with the clean. Well, you ha- you had, I had to. Mm-hmm. There was like, there was marks on everything. Unbelievable. You know. Um, I don't, it sounds like a, a, a silly question. Did they leave a review, Sinead? No. Okay. No. That's no, so we contacted them and asked them for a, a, an additional cleaning fee of 30 euro. Mm-hmm. You know, and uh, I think all in all, taking everything out of it, we probably came out with 20 euro for that. Yeah. Plus the stress and the frustration. And disappointment. 
Yeah, and it, and it, and it's also incredibly disrespectful. Um, you know, to do that to somebody else's property. I mean, you could have turned them away at the first contact, but you did let, lay down some basic ground rules, which I don't think were unreasonable at all at all. And they were uh, obviously completely and utterly yeah. ignored because they even went beyond course, it, a dog running into a bedroom accidentally. They bedded the dogs in there with... Yeah, with, they bedded know, the dogs uh, yeah. in there. Okay. Yeah, and I mean, it's not the dogs. Of course not. No, Dog I know what you're season, saying. Yes. You know? yeah. <laughs> it's a matter of you know mutual respect and general soundness that we allow animals into the into the cottage. And most people are. Now we have had a visitor during the summer who allowed the dog on the bed, and there was a stain on the mattress, and we had to get that cleaned. And they didn't even leave a review mm. either. So you know you can bend over backwards for people. Okay. And nothing, you know, it just depends on the individual. But in but a way, too, you see, being, what, what is sad is that it kind of has made you have to adjust your philosophy to some extent, not to a great extent, but in other words, like what you wanted to offer, what you believed you could provide. Now you're at the mm -hmm. point whereby if someone lands in the same situation again, you actually have to do that confrontation and you actually have to turn them away. So in a way it's kind of it's, it's spoiled it's spoiled really a little bit a little bit of the sort of philosophy. It's clear you've put a lot of time and effort into this. It's it's a shame really, but it's a it's it's yeah. you have to make And those then, then you you run the risk of getting a bad review for doing something like that. And a bad review, um we have, like, we've been in operation a year. We've just got the status of super host with Airbnb for the, f the few we've done there. But um, all our reviews are five star, and one person left a four star review because they said it, it was too cold and they wanted the heating turned up. And when we went over to turn the heating up for them, they had all the windows and the back door lying. Still open. You see, Sinead, people are strange. We're all strange in a way. But <laughs> do you know what I mean? And you, that's when you're in the but service it took us industry. Ages I, to get our, our review back up, you know. I and know, and I know. Um, But that's what you're against. Of course, against, yeah. You know? All right, Sinead. Well, listen, thanks for, for sharing the story with us. Thank you um, so much for asking me on. No, no, it's, it's, uh, it's just a, it's a sickener. But look, at, uh, I'm sure you, your guest arriving for the week. Um, we'll we'll have a lovely stay and hopefully it'll ease the, the memory of your previous experience. Thanks, Sinead. Thank you very much. Take care bye of yourself. Bye-bye. Right, bye-bye. Okay, more on the way. The County's number one talk show, The Nine Till Noon Show on Highland Radio. The Nine Till Noon Show with Letterkenny Credit Union. Simplify your debts with a debt consolidation loan from Letterkenny Credit Union. Call us on 074-910-2126 or apply online via our app or in office today. It's a Tuesday. You're off, but you're not off. You're in town to pick up their kit or do a big shop and you'd love a bite to eat somewhere. But it's only Tuesday. Well, there's no need to feel guilty about stopping off at Kelly's Diner because the menu is packed with tasty choices at great value. With fast, friendly service and loads of parking, you can treat yourself any day of the week at the award-winning Kelly's Diner. Mountain Top, Letter Kenny. Check out Sister Sarah's, the ultimate gastropub experience in Letterkenny, with a fresh, exciting new menu. Why not celebrate your special occasion in one of our three private function rooms? You can catch all the live sport on our 12 screen daily, with some of the best live music and entertainment in the Northwest every weekend. In Sister Sarah's, serving food you'll love from Wednesday to Sunday. Vision Zero means no road deaths or serious injuries on Irish roads by 2050. Improved safety innovations within vehicles and new enforcement technology will play a huge part in making our roads safer. And the new roadside drug testing device is also helping to tackle drug driving on our roads. These are just some of the ways Ireland can achieve Vision Zero. No road deaths or serious injuries by 2050. Find out more at rsa.ie from the Road Safety Authority. Join us on the 14th of October at the Letterkenny Motor Show as we showcase our range of 241 Kias and 241 Nissan vehicles that will be available to order for January 241. Our sales team will be on hand to answer any questions you may have. iMotors, your home for Kia and Nissan in Donegal. The Euro Millions jackpot is an estimated 40 million euro. Play responsibly, in-store, in-app or at lottery.ie. The National Lottery. It could be you. 
Hello there, this is John McNichol inviting you to join me at my music weekend at the Clannery Hotel in Letterkenny. On Friday the 20th of October we have Phil Minnie Begley and Brenton Shine. On Saturday the 21st we have Louise Morrissey and Stephen Smith. And on Sunday afternoon we have Gary Gamble, Sandy Kelly and David James. Come join us for a wonderful weekend. You can pay at the door. We look forward to seeing you there. Highland Radio time checks with Expressway. Travel Route 32 from Letterkenny to Dublin when you book online and travel for less. Expressway, bringing you the time at... OK, well, the time now is 17, just turning 18 minutes past 11. Now, uh, Fergal Blaney the political editor of the Irish Mirror. He joins us on the programme now. Good morning to you. Thank you uh, for joining us. I do appreciate it. Right, now, um, you've published today part one of a special investigation into, I suppose, the ease of access for teenagers and and, and vapes, uh, Fergal. What stood stood out for you? Exactly. I suppose um, what what prompted our investigation was, it's obviously been in the news a lot lately about vaping and everybody sees the little disposable products on every every street corner on the ground. So so we were curious on that and we asked the HSE if there were any incidents where people were getting seriously hurt from vapes and we were shocked to discover that uh, last year there were seven people hospitalised, children. Seven children were hospitalised, vape-related incidents. So it was zero in the two years before that. It was seven last year, and we don't know what it is yet this year. So that prompted our interest. But obviously, we seem to be having a little bit of an epidemic. So we've gone to a couple of areas on this, and we'll be exploring it more over the coming days. So we have our response from the HSC 7, which is very shocking. And then we got on to a teacher down in Tipperary, um, with Principal Peter Creedon. And he told us some very, very, very disturbing news of what it's like at the cold face he had a student that was able to toy with the wattage on one of the vaping machines to basically turn up the heat yeah. and he suffered a very very serious reaction he collapsed in the schoolyard the ambulance was called and he was told by first responders the teacher that it was touch and go for a while so that was very very serious so we've moved it on to political level as well then we will be over the coming days and um, we talked to Tonish to Michal Martin because everyone will remember he's He's really famous all over the world for bringing in the actual smoking ban 20 years ago now. And he's very, very concerned about this. And he told us yesterday that this he considers vaping because, by the way, not everyone knows, but the vapes, uh, the companies that own them are big tobacco as such. Yep, they and he are called them. it revenge. Yeah. Fergal, he called what, it revenge. What, the is, there any, is there any... Yeah, indeed, an interesting an interesting mm. quote there. But listen, we, we had uh, early warnings of this an awful long time ago. As you would know, in America, we're kind of reaching yep. the point that they did now six, seven years ago. Uh, and other countries have, have taken strong action. I think we're a bit of a, a laggard in terms of banning these, uh, the yeah. sale of these to under 18s. Has anyone ever in, in political circles given an excuse as to why this has been allowed to become the epidemic that it has? Because still to this day, you walk into a shop, they've got a, a, a sexy TikTok shaped screen behind the counter, mm-hmm. uh, you know, promoting uh, vaping, all the different flavours, the fancy little machines that are there, impulse purchase. Like, has anyone in political circles actually responded as to why it's only now they seem to be waking up to this issue? It's scary. It's scary. I suppose my simple answer is politics moves very slowly. Politics is a bit of a, a tanker when it comes to issues like this. They will always say that it takes time to introduce legislation, that they have to... Of the dreaded reports that they have to commission. Uh, they have finally got some sort of legislation on the table. It's the Public Health, Tobacco Products and Nicotine Inhaling Bill. Uh, but so that's stuck in, it's stuck in committee land at the moment. It's actually going to be there tomorrow. And when that does come in, if it comes in, uh, sometime next year, we would definitely not see before the end of this year, it's going to ban sales of vapes for under 18s. Mm. But as you say, that does nothing for where we are now, where you've got the brightly coloured, uh, bubblegum flavours and you know vaping advocates will say oh it's it's a you know smoking cessation uh, ad- ad- advice that they're giving to people but you know I don't see many adults that would yeah. like to have polar I bottles. Mean, we we could vape. find ourselves yeah. in the situation Fergal whereby legislation will be passed uh, once it's announced in the budget to, uh, later today legislation will be passed before the end of the year to enact a tax on vaping products uh, before yeah, we were we were we were hopeful of that. Yeah, but we before that, the but legislation actually, comes yeah. in to ban them for the sale of under eighteens. Like I think parents and guardians, it's tough out there, isn't it, Fergal? They need a hand on this one. 
It is, it is, it is. It's complicated, it's intricate, and the vapes tax, uh, confusingly, like you say, is completely separate to the Public Health um, Nicotine Inhaling Products Bill. The indications are now that it will be mentioned in the speech today. They do this sometimes in government. Mm. They mention that a tax is coming, but then they say, oh, well, we need to do more work on it. So my sources tell me that it's um, going to be next year, perhaps in the budget next year, as far away as that, that the vaping tax will be brought in. Mm -hmm. That'll be another tactic from the government as well for everybody, not just for children, to try and make vaping very dear, on a par with cigarettes perhaps someday, and that they hope that will drive people away from it. But... I'm not so sure because once you make something uh, a little more illicit and a little more illegal, especially amongst, especially amongst children and young adults, uh, it's going to make it more attractive for them. And do you know what's never suppose, considered? Can I add one of the, yeah, go ahead. Please add away. Yep. Sorry, one of, the main, one of the main points of our day, one of the investigation today was we just sent a 14-year-old out um, with his parents' permission, of mm -hmm. course, and we sent him out to vaping shops in Dublin. And within an hour, he had a armful of vaping products. They never asked him for ID. He was only 14. There is no law against it, you see. But some shops, mainly the multiple supermarkets, etc., did say, what age are you? And no, we don't want to sell to under 18s. But as it stands, and we proved it today, youngsters... We know they're vaping as young as 10, we're told by the school principals. Youngsters can go into any of these vaping shops. They sell other devices as well. You can see them in every high street in Ireland. And there's no law against it at present. And we don't really know what's in them, except that they can be very dangerous if they are abused, as we saw with the poor child who collapsed in an ambulance was called a temporary. Yeah, indeed. And that was the shocking element of the reports, that the, it, the injuries, and those are the ones that we hear of. But what I was going to say also, Fergal, before you passed on that important information, is, mm. is that like everything... When legislation is written and passed in, in, in Dublin, it doesn't often take it into account border counties. Uh, we've seen that no. with, we've seen that with coal, we've seen it with through COVID, and I think we're going to see it with vapes again. In that, you know, it will perhaps benefit the majority, but we're still probably going to be in a situation where, uh, you know, mm. these products are easily accessible across the border and people will start to travel for them if they have an addiction. More so now, I'm talking about the adults than the, than the, than the teens, mm. Virgil, but, you know, we need to start doing stuff on an all-island basis. We do, of course, yeah. There needs to be a joined-up thinking there, which is often lacking. And in the post-Brexit days as well, it's, it's, it's people are divided on all sorts of trade issues. Mm. So you're hitting another point there that's down the tracks again, mm. past legislation that we need to work with our colleagues in the north because, thank God, there's no real such border as such anymore. Yeah. And it's very easy for people to get products that they want in one jurisdiction or the other and easily transport them and do what they want with them. All right, Fergal, the investigation continues tomorrow. Is that correct? Is it... Yeah, tomorrow we have the Chief uh, Tornister speaking to us, Micheál Martin, and then we will concentrate on schools and then the medics. We have people like a um, consultant, respiratory, respiratory, the big word, respiratory consultant, Des Cox, and John Crown, who's an oncologist who everybody will remember was a senator a few years ago yeah, and very sure. outspoken. All right, listen, yeah. Fergal, thanks for that. It's in the mirror today and we'll continue for the rest of the week. Have a lovely day. Uh, that is uh, the political editor of the Irish Mirror, Fergal Blaney there. Watch the show live now on YouTube, Facebook and at highlandradio.com. The 9 till noon show with Letterkenny Credit Union. Now offering mortgages from 40,000 to 600,000 euro with no hidden fees or transaction charges. Letterkenny Credit Union, 9102127. New this week at Home Store and more. All living room throws are half price. But better hurry because when all the half price living room throws are gone, they're gone. Also, all Halloween is still all half price. But when all the half price Halloween ghosts and ghouls and super scary devilish decorations are gone, they're definitely gone. <laughs> Drop by your local home store and more or visit us online at homestoreandmore.ie. New store now open in Frascati Centre, Black Rock, Dublin. Home store and more. A happy home. Creative Landscaping Works are the Donegal distributors of millboard cladding and decking. Thanks to its unique polymer resin construction, this decking and cladding doesn't deteriorate like natural wood and won't be beaten for durability. It also has superb slip resistance, even when wet, and every board is produced using recycled materials. Live life outside with millboard at Creative Landscaping Works, Lisnen and Letterkenny. See creativelandscapingworks.com. 
Do you want the very best for your pet? At Gary's Pet Word Letter Kenny, we offer fantastic value on all your pet foods, accessories, grooming and pet care products. We cater for cats, dogs, rabbits, birds and fish and open seven days per week at Letter Kenny Retail Park or you can browse and buy 24-7 at petworld.ie and we will deliver to your home. Treat your pet with a visit to Gary's Pet World. It's what they deserve. This Halloween half term, there are ghastly goings on across Northern Ireland with the National Trust. <laughs> Enjoy an enchanting Hallow's Eve at Castle Ward. Sneak your finds into the new food fair at Florence Court's Harvest Festival of Colour. Tiptoe into the world of spooky trails and storytelling at Mount Stewart. And brave Finn's frightful fun fest at the Giant's Causeway with broomstick wrists at Spring Hill and a monster market at Rowellan Garden. Search National Trust NI. Join us, the Elusive Theatre Group, to celebrate being 100 as part of the Cathedral Quarter Letterkenny Literary Festival. We have recorded two plays, Moving Out and A Garden Party. Moving Out will be broadcast this Wednesday at 8pm, followed by A Garden Party on Wednesday the 18th. We'd love to have you tune in. All right, welfare increases, tax cuts, they're among the budget measures which the Cabinet uh, is signing off on uh, this morning. It'll have a range of cost of living payments included, including three energy credits of €150 each. Uh, Michael McGrath will outline the full budget in a dull speech at 1pm. Uh, but an awful lot of it's already been uh, outlined, as uh, is the norm. Now, to help us uh, see what's in this, John Lowe of uh, The Money Doctors joins us. John, great to have you back on. How are you keeping? Very well indeed, Greg, and you look great. <laughs> oh, thank you very much. That's very kind of you. Right, so, I mean, can you frame this, or could not you, could this be framed as a giveaway budget? There's uh, something for everyone in the audience, but is there enough, I suppose, for it to have the the impact the government parties are hoping? Well, uh, there's obviously one eye on the next election, that's for sure. Um, but in fairness, we are suffering quite a lot. Uh, every uh, aspect of our nation, from you know the low pay to the high paid, even the squeezed middle, as they call them. But um, you know, I've I've been certainly campaigning for a while uh, on the fact that you know the buy to lets, the investment properties, and um, they're allowed one hundred percent interest on the mortgage. But yet the poor, unfortunate uh, homeowners who have these huge uh, mortgages, along with the fact that for 14 months, we, they had 10 increases. Well, they're finally getting some respite. Uh, so there's a mortgage break uh, up to, what, 1,250 for those homeowners who had a home loan between 80,000 and half a million at the end of last year. <clears throat> what they'll get is 20% uh, relief on the increased amount of interest paid on their mortgage between 2022 and 2023. So that covers those basically, those 10 increases. And does that still <laughs> only apply to those on tracker or variables? There's been no, no interest relief for those who fixed, I wonder. Uh, I think it's only going to apply to those on, on trackers because uh, maybe the, the, the variables may squeeze in there as well. But certainly the, the, the fixed rates, there were a lot of people, a lot of my clients who fixed last Christmas, you know, they fixed, uh, Greg, at like 2.05% for five years. Mm -hmm. You know, they're, they're, they're laughing all the way to the bank. Um, it's good to see tax credit for renters as well. That's going to go from 500 a year to 8, 800. Uh, I think that's a, a fair enough uh, comment. Um, you know, rents have also gone through the roof. And they certainly need some some uh, support. Mm. And and there is the danger uh, now. You see that we, we have this situation where the majority of people listening, this doesn't feel like it's relevant to them. But we have a a economy that is performing very very well, and we have seen a reduction in um, uh, inflation. But that doesn't mean the cost of things aren't going up. And there is genuine concern that's come from many quarters, except for government, that this budget and the way it's been framed could actually drive inflation back up again and I suppose negate really some of the function of interest uh, rate increases. That remains to be seen, but it is certainly a, a, a risk that this could uh, add extra fire uh, to an already hot economy, John. You're absolutely right, uh, Greg, because it's going to certainly um, with like they're 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 dealing with fire here. Uh, you know, they've increased, for instance, the uh, top rate of tax uh, from you know to forty thousand at the moment you pay the forty percent tax rate 
over 40,000. That'll soon go up to 42,000. Um, all of these little you know, moves by uh, the, the government uh, are going to uh, add, I mean, 6% at the moment is inflation. Uh, and you're right, it could creep up again as a result of all these little mini uh, breaks that they're giving social welfare. Uh, and I, I've been harping on again about uh, the pension. The pension's going up by 12 euros a week. Uh, so that'll be, what, 277 euro. Um, and, you know, uh, like in 20 years' time, Greg, we won't be able to afford the pensions for the burgeoning amount of uh, increased uh, pensioners who are retiring. Like we, we'll have three times the numbers we have today. And yet, instead of having five workers for every person who retired, as we had last year, there'll be two. So basically, it's not going to, the money is just not coming in. Coming in. Like we're already down, what, 23%? in the corporation tax this year um like uh, there won't be enough workers paying coppers into the the, the exchequer funds to actually fund the 1.8 million people there will be over the age of 67 certainly uh, by 2050 maybe that's why they're so keen to see the see the uh, the population growth who's to say that that's not uh, one one function of that but also too obviously it'll be sold uh, again as a budget and i'm not saying it's not the case as one that is to sort of help the squeezed middle you know the working poor but you know like some people might frame it that someone working the working poor will only end up three or four euro a week better off than someone who's on social welfare because they're going to see uh, an increase of 12 euro per week as well and i think it'll probably be worth about 15 or 16 euro to your average uh, worker so you know some might say well that's not really fair because you know we're not we're working out there and people don't work for lots of reasons but it, they, they might not see enough of a gap in that to be satisfied that this is good for them you see, one of the problems here about your squeeze middle is that all of the costs, like food, uh, the childcare costs, um, they're all net income. Like you have to have a net income to pay for your child to go to a, to a creche or go to kindergarten or go to even Montessori. Um, also, also the same for food. Oh, food has gone through the roof. I mean, I believe it or not, Greg, I've come across couples who are on between them over 200,000 and they can't cope. They can't cope. They have a huge mortgage, which went out, uh, out of sync, you know. They've got the food, they've got all the credit. Child problems. carries can be the, the equivalent of a mortgage. And and John also too, like I, this a lot of this feels to me a little bit about moving the deck chairs around uh, because, you know, the uh, the big news that emerged really for me in the last couple of weeks is the cost of getting to net zero, 700 billion. And it really hasn't been talked about or figured out as to how the government gets to that point, compensating farmers, moving farmers away from farming, not having the tax take on petrol, oil, uh, diesel. Uh, you, you know, and that is coming down the line really, really shortly. You talked of the, the, the pension time bomb. The net Ooh. zero time bomb is absolutely huge. And to be honest with you, if a budget's not really referencing that now in 2023, it would make me wonder how seriously really this whole net zero project is being taken. Let me say that figure again, 700 billion. Well, the Green Party, of course, would, would argue with you, Greg, and say that they have managed to persuade the government to uh, have three billion uh, into a little kind of fund to help them, uh, you know, you know, deal with the farmers, uh, deal with the diesel and the, and the petrol. Uh, how they're going to distribute that or how they're going to play it out is, is is going to be interesting. But you're absolutely right. It is seven hundred billion. And just in case people don't know what that is, that's uh, seven hundred thousand million, by the way. <laughs> Unbelievable stuff, isn't it, John? Yeah, it um, is. So, um, I mean, there's a few questions coming in about the nitty gritties of it, like working family payments and what have you. There's some stuff has been leaked, but I'm not sure enough has been leaked to get, as I say, down into the nitty gritties of it. We're going to have to really wait to see what is yeah. there. And, and then people will add up what the benefit is to them in terms of reduced childcare cost, you know, USC changes, tax changes and what have you. So really, it's probably going to take until tomorrow before we can, as I say, get into the nitty gritty of it, John. Well, you know, again, a lot of the stuff uh, which is out there, you know, you've got uh, the universal social charge, um, which is, is going to go from 4.5% down to 4%. Uh, 
Uh, I mean, you, you look at, at the governments for four or five years ago, they said they want to get rid of it. It was going to be incorporated into the PSI and there was going to be just one tax. They still haven't done that. Um, as I say, also, you know, they got double child payment, child benefit before Christmas. Uh, and a double welfare payment after Christmas. So you've got then the three 150 energy credits, uh, one before Christmas, two after Christmas, and um, they're all gonna add to at least some uh, amelioration for those who are really struggling. There's a lot of families out there struggling. But with that in mind, John, are you surprised that they're still persisting with universal payments and not targeted payments? Oh, sorry, are you payment? surprised they're still uh, focusing on universal payments? So, in other words, you could have, you, you know, you can have someone uh, who's a, a, a millionaire, a billionaire, and will get a hundred and fifty euro tax credit. Do you think, or, or an energy credit? Sorry, uh, are you surprised that they they haven't used the resources that we'd have through through the, the the revenue and welfare to target some of these measures that you could actually give more to those that need it more? Uh, I am surprised at that. I do know, in fact, I have come across people, uh, families who are wealthy and individuals who are wealthy and who won't take those kind of uh, breaks and um, they will pay them back. Uh, the, unfortunately, they're few and far between, but the, I think it, it should be, uh, I mean, they have the wherewithal to be able to differentiate between those who really do need the money and those who, who, who don't. So why don't we use that resource? Mm -hmm. And I suppose it's never a bad time, is it? Maybe when taxes are being changed and payments are being changed to, uh, I suppose, look at your own finances, John. We talk about this regularly uh, and there are tools there for that. Make sure you're not paying direct debits that are for nothing and start budgeting a little bit and, and looking after the, the, the money that you have. I think sometimes we're all a little bit guilty of you know, not keeping an eye or eye as, as closely on things as we should. It's very easy. It's very easy, Greg, to, you know, first of all, do a budget planner kind of spreadsheet. Um, I mean, I offer one and if anybody wants to write to me, I'd be very happy to give them our budget planner spreadsheet, which taught itself up, has all the categories. And the thing about it is when you sat down with your wife, the bottle of wine on the kitchen table and your laptop and you fill it all out and you see what your expenditure is, you ask yourself two questions. Number one, do I need it? Number two, is there a better or cheaper alternative? And really, at the end of the day, if you are spending more than you're earning, you've got three choices. And one is earn more, two is cut costs, and the third one is prioritize. And prioritize, you know, in the last five years, 300,000 people stopped paying their um, health insurance. They simply couldn't afford it, Greg. Yeah, of course. And then also, too, if you're lucky enough to have some disposable income, that would probably sort of, you know, so what am I doing with the extra money? Because I'm not seeing it in my account. And it all, it, it, as I say, it works for everyone dependent on their circumstance. John, as always, thank you very much indeed. Moneydoctors.ie if you want to make contact and find out more information. Have a lovely day. Uh, John Lowe there, 0866025000. The Nine Till Noon Show is brought to you by Letterkenny Credit Union. Digital loans now. Now available. Apply online or via our app today and get your loan transferred directly to your current account. Hey there, folks of Letter Kenny. Mark your calendars. It's the Letter Kenny Motor Show happening on Saturday, the 14th of October, on a pedestrianised Lower Main Street. Come and explore the latest car models, enjoy fun activities for the whole family, and discover incredible deals that will get you on the road in style. It's the perfect family day out, and we can't wait to see you there. The Letter Kenny Motor Show is brought to you by the local franchised motor dealers and proudly supported by First Citizen Finance, Letter Kenny Chamber, Donegal County County. Council, the Society of Irish Motor Industry and FBD Insurance. Visit letterkennymotorshow.ie for more detail. And then Rudita Rogod, not the way talk Rudy Bilga, Kuraska, the Viar Hodja. I say, the Akroti Kudelta. Sha, no Mavim Fui Rudigoni. Sha, no Imniok Gaminic. To point to Ku Illigle, the Viar Hodja. Came though we will a Isagot, they show a leg. Ah, brat near me a year fain, Fui Maris old it. Imni, Bruce Isla Bree, Gunnavehan on Colour, Winning Shichil Illogle of Yarlanta, Dane on Kangal, Agus Vaikun of Egurmental Health. I am an Ukna Serafisha's launcher. Shortcut your way to delicious dinners with Dunstore's Cook at Home range. Our sweet chili Irish sirloin just needs a quick stir fry. The spicy Piri Piri half chicken is ready to roast. And hearty tomato and basil Irish meatballs go straight in the oven. Mm. Easy, delicious, and you can mix and match any two for €10. Euro. Plus, with our 5 of 25 grocery voucher, you save even more. Dunn Stores. Always better value. 
Terms and conditions apply. Buy can be used on next in store grocery shop of 25 euro or more. PDO Thread Lifts and Skin Boosters, which rejuvenate the skin by improving facial contours, lifting and tightening the jaws, neck, cheeks, and eyebrows, are available at Genesis Aesthetics and Skincare Clinic Gidor. To choose the right aesthetic treatment for you, contact Mary Ferry, your aesthetic practitioner. Also offering fat dissolving treatments, dermal fillers, and laser treatments for all skin conditions. Hair and makeup packages also available. Genesis Aesthetics and Skincare Clinic Gidor, 07495325. Highland Radio weather updates with Ireland West Airport, where you can now fly daily to London Heathrow with Aer Lingus and connect via Heathrow to over 80 destinations worldwide, including Boston, New York and more. Outbreaks of rain and drizzle extending eastwards during the afternoon. More persistent rain will develop uh, across the northwest towards evening. Traf- tracking southeastwards, warm and humid, temperatures 17 to 19 degrees, but becoming breezier with moderate to fresh and gusty southwest winds. Now, anyone who travels to, through, uh, or into uh, Letterkenny will have noticed that um, it's a hard town now to get around at quite a few times in the day. There are bottlenecks and what have you, an awful lot of frustration and people getting caught up. And, and, and you know, the sad thing is is if, if people end up avoiding going into Letterkenny because that then has a, a knock-on impact on businesses and other services, and we don't want to see that, do we? Uh, Councillor Jay McMonigal is uh, tabling a motion today at uh, a council meeting um, on this matter. Good morning, Jerry. Thanks for taking the time again to talk to us. I appreciate it. No bother, Greg. And uh, just uh, was a miss me yesterday, but uh, congratulations to you and the team on your recent award. Well All deserved. Right. No, I appreciate that, Jerry. I really do. Okay, so um, I mean, you, 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 if you're a motorist or you live in Letterkenny or you travel into it, you know there's there's increasing frustration uh, out there. Is it more traffic or or uh, worse management of it? I mean, obviously there are professionals that will hopefully offer the answers to that, but what do you think is going on? Why is it so difficult to get around at Kenny? Well, look, the bottom line is is that with the increased volume of traffic coming into town, the town is not fit to uh, manage that traffic flow. Uh, as you know, we have the, the Port Bridge, we have been for over 20 years campaigning to get another bridge, uh, in which it's termed as the, the Bonaghy Link. Uh, that's slowly but surely come to fruition. But in the meantime, the traffic buildup has been there, and it's now been plain to anybody that wants to look at it that we would need at least three bridges in Nether County one from the ETA Bain Road over to the Leck Road, and one then from the Rock Hill Road area over to the Grantys Road. So until they go and come into place, there's a number of, of initiatives that have been introduced by Council. The latest one will be the traffic lights at the at the Post Star Roundabout. But my motion today is, is about uh, getting the NTA to take notice of what's happening here in Letterkenny. Uh, I mean, it's our responsibility to ensure around uh, public transport and that, you know, that there isn't the congestion that there is. Uh, yeah. we, we have a number of ideas that we've been discussing for a number of years now. Uh, park and ride facilities on the edge of the town, uh, a proper and, uh, and efficient uh, public, tra- uh, public transport uh, system. And look, the council is in a position to... To, to get all that's needed for that to happen. So what I'm looking for is the NTA to come under Letter Kenny, look at it and give us whatever supports and resources that are needed to implement, one, a public bus service that is efficient and effective, and two, that we can uh, start mapping out the park and ride facilities and that we, you know, we get the, the necessary finances to put them in place. Nothing exists at the moment, does it? There's no town bus, there's no public transport to navigate the various parts of the town, be it from the uh, ATU to the shopping centre, you know, down to the lower main street, across over to the retail park out there. There's no there's no public no, and transport, it's very frustrating. There? And it's very frustrating for us as councillors, but I'm sure it's equally frustrating for uh, the, the ordinary people out there. We, we've been in discussions with uh, bus providers for uh, three or four years now. We thought we had uh, a good service that was looked good on paper. It was being presented as, as a way forward where it would 
enables that there would be three buses on the go all the time that they'd be there from early morning to uh, late into the evening that they would provide transport for people going to work uh, and also for taking them home from work and that in between that during the day there'd be regular service to different parts of the town but this seems to have fallen through uh, and we need to get the NTA in We've had a, a presentation from the local link company there recently. They're doing fantastic work right across the county. And I think they've got the, the where for all and the plan to uh, to put in place a, a proper bus service in Letterkenny. But that's that's work that we have to get at. And I think without those extra resources from NTA, that there will be a long way down the road. And also, too, um, you know, there are ambitious plans in terms of investment in Letterkenny, the development of Letterkenny, uh, the growing of the population in, in Letterkenny. But your infrastructure, uh, not just the public transport, but the roads infrastructure has to match that. I mean, it has to be a multi-tiered approach, doesn't it? You can't have a multi-strand approach. You sort of can't say, right, we're going to quadruple the population or whatever it might be, or we're going to try and attract this, that and the other into town, but have no way of getting people around the town. There has to be fully joined up thinking. Yeah, and it's taken far too long. You know, and in fairness to our, our, our roads uh, team uh, they, and, and roads de- design team, they, they, they have the, the plans there for, you know, the Leck Road, uh, for the One Day Hall Road, uh, the Bonaghy Link, the, the bridge across, the, the, the other bridge across the Swilly there at, at New Tivolina Road. But we haven't got the resources to implement that. Uh, and we haven't certainly got the money yet. We haven't given the go-ahead. Uh, the Bonaghy Link, were dependent on the 10T. That's very advanced. They're talking about possibly 2025, 20, 26. It might be starting, but when will it be up, finished? 2028? 20, I don't think that can can wait that long. So what we're saying is that, you know, we're a regional centre, as you say. We, we have a vision for the future development of Letter County and the growth of it and the city. And what we need is for the NTA to, to take stock of that, to mm. come up here and look at what we need and to help and assist us in every way and any way that they can. The caller uh, says the four lanes was the perfect opportunity for a bus lane to be installed, but they never took that opportunity. There's no forward planning around the town, so what do they expect? Another says Letter County needs a ring road. Nothing else is going to do it. Uh, when are they going to do something about this instead of constantly talking? Now, I think the sort of the... The relief roads or, or, or the roads you mentioned, effectively, you could probably end up describing that as a ring road. I don't think you're, you and, and that colour are a million miles away in what's needed. No, and, and that, they, them plans are there. And as I say, in fairness to our road design team, they, they have been battering the door of the department. Uh, they've been engaging in public consultation. Uh, and like we, we're readily rolling. We've been awarded uh, monies. they proceed with with those plans but we're still far away from getting the diggers in on the ground and look what we need to do is get national bodies to take notice to come up here uh, and be part of this i mean after all we we, we've been selected by the government as one of the six regional centers uh we're seen as the potential for growth into that city Uh, the northwest city region uh, work that we're involved in also recognizes that there so what we need now is for the government to invest in that belief and, and that vision. It should and be an easy to argument to make necessary. because there are similarly sized towns with green buses, electric buses buzzing around all of the time. You know, uh, yeah. this would take cars off the road, uh, theoretically. You know you know what I mean? It, it, particularly in this day and age, it should be an argument that's, that doesn't even need to be had. But we'll, it, we'll follow with interest to see what comes uh, from your motion. Uh, Councillor Donald Coyle, he's also going to ask the council to explain the reason for traffic care and the Kilmacrennan Road. So there's going to be a lot of talk uh, about uh, Letterkenny and its roads infrastructure at today's meeting. So for now, Councillor Jerry McMonagall, thank you for joining us. Thank you, Greg. Bye-bye. Take care of yourself and we'll uh, have, have coverage of, of what comes of those motions later on. Uh, today around the North West is live from Donegal Education and Training Board's newest further education and training centre at the Business Park Road in Letterkenny. It's for their student welcome day to kick off the new term. Uh, They'll find out more about uh, the range of full and part-time courses, the adult guidance and information service, student support, and about the range of activities in the centre. So join us live on Tuesday today from 12 at Donegal ETB's newest further education and training centre. As I mentioned, that's on the Business Park Road in Letterkenny. So great bit of radio there. You'll get plenty of information. I'm sure if you're in that area, call in and say hello. That's coming up for you in about... 
uh, nine minutes. A caller says, uh, an age restriction on vapes could have been implemented at any point over the last seven years. It didn't need new legislation as the provision is already in. Uh, which begs the question then why do other governments saying that they need more legislation i have an airbnb for the past seven years tell that lady she'll get approximately two guests like that each year unfortunately that risk goes with the job there you go Uh, so there is an average of people that come in and sort of disrespect your property but this caller says it's all down to the attitude of dog owners went for a walk in dunlouis on sunday and coming back to the car was met by a group of four people with seven dogs not a lead in sight. Can you imagine if you were at a fear of dogs? Uh, fair play to Sinead for coming on and speaking about this dog owner. Needs to be more responsible, house trained, etc. Never the dog, always the owner, of course. And Sinead herself uh, made that point. Uh, you know, the dog doesn't know what's going on. Uh, hi, Greg. I'm an adult. I hate Halloween. I'm scared of bangers and I don't want people coming to the door. Last year I had my door banged and people shouting, we know you're in there. What can I do to stop it? I mean, I don't know. Do you have a gate uh, that you could put a sign on? Um, I don't know. Uh, this, this is a time of year that brings an awful lot of fear. And, and that's off the back of a comment from um, a report from uh, Garda Sergeant Union Walsh, which is really terrifying. Can you imagine someone, uh, it was in Letterkenny, wasn't it, put a firework, a lit firework in through the door of someone's house. Now, can you imagine the injury that that could have caused to a, an adult or a child sitting or playing in the hall? As it turned out, uh, the door went on fire. They managed to control the fire. Thankfully, they were in the house and not asleep upstairs or something. Um, but that is very serious crime. Five years in prison, potentially, €10,000 fine. But we really need to talk to everyone who needs to listen and say, if you think that's fun, um, you really need to cop yourself on because it's not fun, it's stupid. Because some people maybe don't know that. <laughs> Uh, We got this uh, email in from someone who didn't want to come on because um, they don't want to feel the ire of uh, others. I live in beautiful Inishone. Stunning, picturesque, amazing place. The people are wonderful and there's a great community spirit and an extremely generous, altruistic nature. There's a conversation needed to be had and I'm just not brave enough to have it in my community. When... Are we going to put an end to pointless and needless burning of fossil fuels as a charity event? This weekend, there was another tractor run in our area. I understand people are burning fossil fuels daily for both heat and transport, but as a community, collectively, burning fuel unnecessarily. Now, this is not something that's uh, been brought up to me before, but this is someone that says tractor runs are really bad for the environment and it goes against community, I suppose, and charity. I think maybe they're implying there as well. Is that something to be considered? I don't know. You're already seeing now places with a reputation for fireworks displays going down the drone route. Now, I don't know what the alternative to a tractor run is, but uh, maybe in the not-too-distant future, more people will agree with that listener and uh, will say, really, should we be burning all this diesel? Um, Let me see. Uh, saw some disturbing posts and comments uh, from Sinn Féin supporters on various websites, Rehamas uh, massacres. Um, seems the balaclava has slipped again. Well, I mean, yeah, Mary Lou MacDonald was uh, speaking on that issue, um, stating her party's policy on it. There's People, regardless of their political background, all have very different views on it. Um, I don't... I don't to say I don't have a view... I tend not to comment on something unless I have a full understanding of it, and I'm still working through that in regards to uh, what is happening. All I know is an eye for an eye leaves, you know, everyone blind, uh, effectively. And um, I'm still processing the justification of some of the stuff that's going on because of the historic stuff that's been endured, and I get that. But uh, I'm still not in a space whereby I can not think of little children being killed or women being uh, raped uh, and men having their heads cut off and being paraded on the back of lorries off the back of all the stuff, bad stuff that's happened. And that's in, in no commentary on it really in any meaningful way. It's just I find all of it so horrendous. I really, really do. Uh, Hi, Greg. Could you please ask if anyone else has experienced this? The doctor referred a family member for a national diabetic eye screening. 
They rang to say it will be five to six weeks before forms are sent and then you have to wait for an appointment after that. Thanks. Uh, I'm not sure. Um, we'll throw it out there and see if anyone listening has a similar experience. I'm not sure. Is, is, is the option there to do it privately? I think some of the... Some of the, the big optician chains do similar screening to that. I'm not sure if that will fit um, what you're talking of. Uh, hi, Greg from Raymond. Gaza is the world's largest concentration camp of some 2.2 million Palestinians, uh, and it's made deliberately by, so by Israel. Indeed, uh, some others describe it as um, the world's largest um, open-air uh, prison. Incredibly heavily populated, and it's a tiny, tiny little land space with 2.2 million people in it. <laughs> Right, that's where we have to leave it on the show today. Come back with us, will you? Uh, we're back with you tomorrow morning at nine. But for me, Greg Hughes and Caroline Orr, who researched and produced, have a great day. And don't forget to stay tuned. John Breslin is quite literally out and about around the northwest.